And we are live. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Red Dot Forum Camera Talk, where we talk about cameras, because kind of in the name. Kind of our thing. Kind of our thing. Uh, so welcome. I am David Farkas. With me, as always, is Josh Lair. We are your resident like experts. Producing the show is Jose Rivera. Hello, and guys. we have, oh, sorry. Give a shout out. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. And uh, in the forums, we've got Kirsten Vignes, uh, adventurer and photographer extraordinaire. So got the, uh, the full team on tap today. Today, we are uh, talking about something very near and dear to our hearts. Yes. What is that, Josh? We are talking about the Leica S system, which is the medium format DSLR that Leica makes. And this is a product, a camera that David and I are both really personally passionate about. There's going to be a lot of stories, a lot of anecdotes, I think, uh, tonight, because we've both traveled and shot extensively with the S, mm -hmm. because it's the best camera Leica makes for a lot of things. And they make a lot of good cameras. This, I that's a bold know, statement. For, I, I think so, and I think that's why you and I gravitate towards it quite a bit. We, we've traveled together um, as well, shooting with the S. So indeed, indeed. We, are, we are excited, um, I think, to get into something that a lot of people, everybody knows M, everybody knows yeah. um, Q and SL, but I think even more so than the CL, which I said was sort of misunderstood. I right, think the right, S right. is even more misunderstood. So might be. We've started uh, a lot of these videos, and I think we're going to keep this going with a bit of history. Um, but um, tell me about, before we get into the history, David, yeah. what is an S camera? What is it? This? This is an S camera? <laughs> yes. What makes Done. an S camera an S camera versus an M or an SL? Well, um, it's unique in the lineup because an M camera is a rangefinder. Yes. A Q is an all-in-one mirrorless camera. Yes. The SL, SL2, that is a professional mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses. Mm -hmm. The Leica CL is a APS size mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a theory, there's a theme here, right? And in fact, the M, the big M word, mirrorless. The M, yeah. being a rangefinder, is also a mirrorless camera. Yes. The Leica S is a DSLR, mm -hmm. digital single lens reflex. Mm -hmm. Reflex meaning there's a mirror inside. Yeah. Which means there's an optical viewfinder. That's right. Which means you're actually looking through the lens with your eyeballs. And this means uh, this looks like the traditional picture of a camera you may draw. Someone asked you to draw a camera right, on a right, piece of paper. Right. Exactly. This is, this is a digital SLR. So that's that's what an S camera is. Let's get, get that out but of the But wait, way. there's more. Oh, of course there is. <laughs> Unlike all the other cameras. So we yes. have the APS lineup yes. with, the, with the CL, mm -hmm. with the TL2. Mm -hmm. We've got full cam cameras like the, the M, the Q2, the, the TL2, or the CL. The SL2, SL2. The SL2. Yes, there's too it. many you got L's. It. You okay. got it, you got it. Um, those are full frame cameras. Yeah. This is larger than full frame. So the S has a sensor that is about 60% larger than full frame. I think you actually have... Uh, I do, I'll hand them off to you since you're, uh, I think, closer up. So we, um, I'll apologize in advance. These are a bit banged up. Here we go. Um, they've been uh, tossed around quite a bit over the years. Um, this was, uh, once we get our uh, close up here. So. Ooh. You see, the that is an M9 sensor and an this S2 one, sensor. This is so, a right. This is a sensor from an M9. Yes. So full frame, meaning, and I'll put this down for a second, 36 on the long side by 24 millimeters on the short side. Yeah. That is colloquially known as 35 millimeter, even though it's 36. But yeah. close enough. When we look at the S sensor by comparison, okay, this is on the long side. 45 millimeters by 30 millimeters. Yeah, hold so, them up next to each other again so they can see. So this is comparing full frame, full frame, full frame against S me, sensor, yep. medium format S. Yeah, what Leica calls Leica Pro format. Yes, because it is a new sensor format when it came out. Yeah, uh, Leica introduced this in in 2008. They sort of teased this camera mm -hmm. at at the uh, Photokina in 2008 in yeah. September, and it was a larger than full frame camera in a body roughly the same size as a traditional professional 35 millimeter DSLR, yeah. like a Nikon or a Canon or right. whatever, right? right? So you have this thing that's like a 5D, but with a sensor size, it's 60% larger. And that was the big thing. And and this camera, what's, what's fascinating about it, it was codenamed at the time Project Africa. Well, not that camera, right? 
Not this camera, actually. Uh, this camera, right oh, here. Right oh, because we actually have We them. have it. So okay. let's, let's start. We got to do it right. So this is the very first one. This is the Leica S2. And you can tell it looks different. The screen on top is different. The dial is different. There's no bump for uh, GPS mm -hmm. or cutout. And, but otherwise, it's, it's pretty similar looking. Uh, so this was the S2. And it was designed entirely from scratch, from the ground up, as a digital medium format camera. And it's really different because up until that point, you have other manufacturers in medium format space, so mm -hmm. like Phase One, Hasselblad, mm -hmm. Mamiya, mm -hmm. Leaf, Cinar, uh, a laundry list of others that are no longer around. That's right. Rest in peace. RIP. <laughs> uh, they were basically taking these legacy film camera bodies, like, you know, think of like an old Hasselblad crank, yeah. snap, crank, yeah. snap, right? And they were bolting on digital backs because at the time, that, digital technology was just grabbing hold, especially in the pro space, they still wanted to be able to shoot film. Right. And then they wanted to, oh, can I use all my gear and shoot right. digital? So of course these companies are like, sure, yeah. give me the money, give me all the cash, <laughs> yeah, and right. we'll give you a back. Then instead of shooting film, it shoots digital pictures. That's right. Whoa. And when you want to, you can still shoot film. That's right. That sounds amazing in theory. Yes. But let me tell you something. <laughs> without, well, without being too negative here. But, no, no, but <laughs> once you, well, I think when, Technology got to a certain point. People realized they didn't really have any interest in shooting film anymore mm. because digital had gotten so good. Right. I mean, right. especially medium format digital. Right. Like it got crazy good. And way, way, way easier than drum scan. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Medium format film. Right. They had instant turnaround. So yeah. from a professional use case, which is where medium format came from. Yes. Right. Yeah. Digital medium format was absolutely a pro level almost pro only product because yeah. of pricing yeah because of sort of complexity early yeah. on and the technique that you needed the to get the most out of it you know you yeah. know and photographers would depend on a digital technician to actually work with them and uh, and take those files and tether to a computer and use specialized software right. everything right. was very proprietary very specialized right and Leica comes into this space around 2008 and they said well what if we did things differently mm -hmm. instead of adapting to a legacy system, what if we came up with something entirely new and we would be able to make something a lot smaller because we wouldn't have to accommodate removable backs right. or removable viewfinders, you know, all that kind of modular things that came with right. a traditional medium format camera. No baggage. Start no baggage. Clean slate. And if we can choose our sensor format, that also means that we can optimize the entire camera around it. We can optimize the lenses for it. We can optimize the mirror box and the viewfinder. And this whole, ser this whole system is built specifically around that sensor. Mm -hmm. So they worked from there, worked backwards, and then figured out what's going to feel most ergonomic. And it's an amazingly balanced camera. Yes. Even the S2, again, we're talking about uh, a dozen years old at this point. Yeah. Is from a, certainly some of the tech is a bit long in the tooth. Right, right, but right. the body, the ergonomics, the viewfinder yeah. is still incredible to use yeah. in 2020. And, and a little bit of trivia, this was designed in collaboration with Meisner Design in Germany. And uh, they actually designed the the uh, iconic Leica R8. Mm, that explains you Remember that? Yeah, and, the, course, and it's yeah. a very similar yeah. design aesthetic to less, the- to Less the, buttons. To the R, yeah, <laughs> okay, to the R8 less. and the R9. Yeah. And, and they went back to them and they're like, we really like your design work on those cameras. Can yeah. you do something with this, but updated and digital yeah. and bigger? Yeah. And, yeah. and of course, they didn't just want to make it small and easy to hold and ergonomic. They also wanted to make this thing a tank, like yeah. a tank. Yeah, a, this, a professional tool. I mean, yeah. why did it take the kind of abuse? Well, well, you say that, and we take that for granted. Sure. But again, these medium format systems that were so prevalent at right, the time. Right, right, were quite fragile, actually. They um, needed like little micro shims yeah, to get yeah, the yeah. sensor and right. if you didn't plug the FireWire cable in, in the a right certain order, way, or yeah. wasn't enough power, I mean, it was really quite Finicky. And you absolutely um, would not want to take this thing in inclement weather. Right. Even just shooting medium format digital at that time in the field. Yeah. Was number one, you had to have a tripod. Mm -hmm. And number two, it was slow and clunky and complicated. And not weather sealed. Yeah. Definitely not. And this, including the lenses. Yes. These are all gasketed sealed lenses. An advantage of designing from scratch is you can, you're they, not dependent right. on any existing infrastructure. You can do anything you want. And that's pretty much what Leica did. Mm -hmm. um, and they did it all themselves. Now, David and I uh, vividly remember the biggest downside of this, which mm. is when you're designing a system from scratch and you're a small company, that means you're designing it from scratch and you're a small company. 
So it took a very long time. And a for, lot of euros. Yes, millions of euros for there to be a mature lens lineup. In the beginning, right. we had the 70. Yep. And then we had the 35, and we... Well, no, the 70 and the 180. The 120. The 180. 180, 180 yeah. right, right. 180. And then and it's like, when is the 180, yeah, 120 we've, coming out? We've when grown, is the 35 coming out? We've grown significantly, and now we have a mature system. Yeah. And you have... How many spoils, lenses do we have now? Uh, I've lost track. It's seven? Eight, not, nine, nine lenses? I can't nine lenses. Like nine, nine, yeah, lenses. a lot, um, which we'll cover later. So it did take... There were some teething pains in the beginning. It took mm -hmm. some time, um, but now... I can look back and say what well, was worth the wait because now we have, when new body comes out, it's not a matter of, oh, I can only get one lens. Now you can right. choose from this whole family of lenses that exists. So yeah. it was kind of a big deal <laughs> for like at the time because everything else, everything else they had done, MR was based on something. An existing system. Yeah, something. Yeah. And now we're talking about something from, from scratch. So the S system uh, for David and I has been something really special because again, we both shoot with it a lot. I started working with you originally, mm -hmm. if you remember, because I was so enamored by the S2. That's right. That's right. I had seen the S2 prototype at an event somewhere in New York, and I just was like, I need that. You need in on that. I need, I need in on that. I need to get right, my hand right. on it. I need to be involved. And and we were, um, the first time we met, you had an S2 in the trunk of the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> was, I think it was a pre-production or, or something. Yeah, maybe. You pulled it out, and I was like, cut me in. And that was, you know, mm -hmm. more than 10 years mm -hmm. ago now. Um, so that's... The gravity of the S system is what drew me into this world mm -hmm. in the beginning, and it keeps me here because there's really nothing else like it. Either yeah. even within Leica, outside of Leica, there's nothing else like it. And you're going to yeah. hopefully learn that over the next however long <laughs> we don't ramble on. However long, yeah. Um, and and it's and it's been great. I mean, going. I mean, this camera basically hit the market in 2009. Yeah. With the big cash of of like like Leica just. Dumped these amazing products on the market in 2009. Yeah, 9x1. 999. Nine, nine, nine. September yeah. 9th, 2009. Yeah. Uh, M9, first full frame digital rangefinder. Right. The X1 right. was the first compact APS size large sensor camera. Yep. Yeah. And you had the S2. Yeah. The first compact medium format camera. So Digital camera. Digital camera. So yeah. what's interesting is you had three camera lines coming out, and they all had the same thing in common. They were the smallest for that large of sensor size. Yeah. The M was the largest right. full-frame camera. Right. The X was the smallest APS camera. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the S2 right, relative to their size, yeah. And the S2 size, was yeah. the largest the uh, smallest, smallest yeah, medium smallest. format yeah. camera, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we've come a long way since then, but I feel like we should probably get one thing out of the way up front, mm. which is we have a lot of cool toys to show you today. There's one <laughs> thing that we don't have. Um, and for good reason, and that just makes me excited for what's next because Right. We'll get into this more. The S3 mm -hmm. is the current model in the Leica S system. It came out last year, I guess, in terms of being announced, and then yeah. um, had a delay here and there. Um, they've only just started to ship the S3. Um, they started shipping a couple of units around the world in mid to late March. But then that kind of stopped. Yeah, we had a bit of a hiatus since then, so mm -hmm. we are kind of in a holding pattern right now. There have not been a lot of cameras shipped. They, are, they do exist. They have shipped. There's already been one firmware update. I mean, they're real. Um, we, of course, want to make sure that people waiting for us to get us cameras or get them before we do. So we don't have a demo nope. S3 right now. Um, David has shot with it. We'll talk about that later. Yep. So we'll be talking a lot about the S3. We maybe show, show some pictures from the S3, and we can answer questions about the S3 to the best of our ability. Uh, but we don't have one on the table. Like if we did, here. somebody watching this video would go, "Why? Well, I'm waiting for you to sell me one. Why, Why don't you have one? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you have one? So. We will eventually, of course, because David and I are dying to um, really put it through its the ringer and see how it compares. So um, just getting that sure. out of the way in case anyone's wondering um, why that's on here. So I think that was a pretty good ramble. We've got a lot to cover, so why don't we get... Well, why, why don't we do... What? Before we dive fully in. Okay. Okay, so we talked about the S2. Yes. Why don't you just briefly catch us up. What happened yes. between the S2 in 2009 and yes. today? And we have okay. a lot of that here. Okay, well, right. So we have the S2. I don't think everybody knows that cycle. That's true. Well, we have, right. We have the S2, which was the first. After the S2 in 2012, right? That's yeah, right. Yeah. Camera, came the S Type 006. This was in Leica's awkward teenage years when they were uh, naming things with this type designation, which is now by the wayside. So the S Type 006 maintained basically the same sensor from the S2, a 37.5 megapixel uh, CCD. They had about 80 or so changes, including under, yeah, under the hood. better screen, better high ISO performance, yep. integrated GPS, 
um, you can see way that. faster, you can see smoother. That right here. Yeah, I mean, considerable improvements. But again, same, basically the same sensor. So image quality was similar. Well, new support electronics gave us a little bit yep. better noise and, and dynamic yeah. range. They give um, all right. So this actually, I think it had double double the buffer memory. Yes. Yeah. Uh, faster frame rate and higher higher res LCD. So this is like this. You can think stuff. about this: the S006 or the 006 or Type 006 or whatever as the ultimate CCD medium format camera. Yeah, that's for where sure. that's where the CCD line ended because then two and a half, three years, twenty fifteen, yeah, three years later, yeah. we saw the S Type 007 which is the camera David and I still use today, um, right, yeah. right there. That's the S-Type 007. So the game changer here was the CMOS sensor. We went from a 37.5 megapixel CCD to a 37.5 megapixel CMOS sensor. Yep. What they gave us was a lot. Uh, number one, we had live view for the first time on a medium format uh, S camera. So a live view on an S camera, way better high ISO performance. I mean, you went from topping out at, I think, 1600 on the 006 to mm -hmm. 12,500 mm -hmm. on the 007. And actually a usable 12,500. Absolutely. Really, Dynam I'd say really good 6,400. Yes, dynamic range improved from 12 and change 12 and to a half. 15 stops of dynamic range, which is insane. Um, totally redesigned interface. It's much, much snappier, it's quicker. Yeah, like it's, it's the, the, the viewfinder blackout is much shorter. For instance, um, this screen. Whoop, this screen yes, here is, is way better, transflective, monochrome LCD, and it's, other things, um, yeah. The way I like to say it is the 007 is still a modern camera. Um, it's still a camera that David and I can grab today and use pretty comfortably. And I do. And the S3 shares a lot in common with the 007 for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many things about the 07 that are still relevant and still current, still very usable, so. Right, um, and you know, even before the S3 was announced, yeah. you know, it was one of these things where people would say, well, what do you think about, what is, what is the next, 008 going to be, right? It was always <laughs> right, like, okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think there is going to be a 008. Yeah. yeah. And there wasn't. Right, there wasn't. Well, but right. there's an S3. But there's yeah. an S3. And, you know, and the thing is, they'd be like, well, what do you think is going to be? I was like, well, do you, can the body be more ergonomic? Right. Well, no, the body's amazing. Right. Okay, well, is the viewfinder going to be any brighter and clearer? Well, right. the viewfinder's it's amazing. As good as it gets, yeah. Like, okay, uh, is it slow? No, it's a really fast medium format camera. Yeah. Okay, but like, is the ISO range bad on the camera? No, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you had, what about the dynamic range? Well, right. it, it checked all of these boxes already. And and what did they want ultimately? Well, more resolution. Pretty much yeah. uniformly, that was yeah. it. We even did, on Red Dot Forum, I, I wrote a an article of what I wanted to see in the next S camera yeah. when we there was nothing, even rumors about an S3. Right. And I just put it out there. I was like, okay, this is what I want to see. And what do you want to see? And I... I put it out there in yeah. a survey, and overwhelmingly, they wanted basically the same ISO performance, or maybe a stop better. Yeah. The same dynamic range. Or the same. Well. Well, it's, we'll, it's, we'll always take better. Obviously. Right. Right. But, but the same dynamic bad, range. Yeah. But they weren't willing to sacrifice dynamic range right. for resolution. Right. But the number one thing is just they wanted something around sixty to seventy megapixel. Yeah. And. Like magic. magic, yes, magic time. Sixty-four megapixels yep. in the S3, so we got what we wanted, and with, and is it even though it has almost double the resolution? Yes, it's pretty much the same speed, shot to shot. Yeah, same speed, same high-level performance with an even greater ISO range. I think we go about to fifty thousand on the uh, right. on the S3. So. Well, well, because they went with a dual gain ISO sensor, right? So uh, got... Which gives you much better ISO performance, even though the pixels are so small. Yeah, it's pretty insane, actually. Yeah. And we're going to do a lot more of that testing as time goes on. And mm -hmm. David does have a lot of cool S3 shots um, to show, and or certainly. We have, as usual, which you haven't mentioned yet, is um, links in the description oh, of yeah. this video. Always. Of all of our S-related content um, from the generations, including the S3. So if you want to see more sample images than you can handle. I uh, even have links to the original S2 review. Yeah. Some of the first impressions of lenses when they first came out. Yeah, you can see the evolution yeah. of the system. You uh, can just kind of yeah. go down there. Yeah. You can see the 007 review. Yeah. The uh, my experience shooting that uh, I took it to Iceland when I first reviewed it. He did a great article about uh, low light, like nighttime shooting. Oh yeah, that's right. Nighttime handheld shooting. Yep. With the 07, which is street photography. Which is like it's so in your mind, it's so counterintuitive, and you see it, you're like, oh, that, that it worked work. perfectly. It worked, yeah, <laughs> it worked yeah, yeah. fine. Um, so, so definitely had, check those out. Yes, a lot of great content because uh, even though David and I can talk forever, we're, there's never enough time to cover all of that. So, and even um, uh, I have an article that's. Oddly titled, why is Leica staying at 37 and a half megapixel? People yeah. were getting a little confused generation after generation, even when they updated the sensor to a better CCD, and yeah. then they updated again to a CMOS, yeah. but they kept the resolution the same. Yeah. And 
it's a really deep dive. I actually talked to the head of R&D at Leica, who I learned more about sensor technology than <laughs> I, I think that I ever yeah. forgot. So if you check that out, you can read about yeah. something really surprising is a lot of people, and I've talked about this before in, in some of our streams, is that people are very quick to give Leica credit for lenses. And they're like, yeah, Leica lenses are amazing. Mm -hmm. They don't really give credit where it's due for the electronic side, for right. the sensor right. and the processing. Right. Right. And I think if they read that article, it would be really fascinating because even on the 2015 model camera, mm -hmm. this is a really advanced sensor yeah. architecture in here yeah. Yeah, yeah. that is unique and exclusive to Leica. Especially when we started getting into discussions in this video about how this compares, how the 07 compares to some of these super modern high-tech Leicas like the SL2 and the M10 monochrome, yeah. um, which of course we'll talk about. So there is right. there's a lot. There's a lot here. Um, I know a lot of people watching or people who are not familiar with the S system may not really know where it fits or understand why anyone would use it, but we're going to be getting into a lot of that. So indeed, I think uh, it's time. We are ready for some questions now. After it's time for some questions. Twenty minutes of us going on and on. So, Jose, what do we got for right. me? Awesome intro. So something that you just mentioned, Josh. Um, what type of photographers should look into a S system? Oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. I think. It is important when you're getting into medium format, whether it's film or digital, Leica or otherwise, to know its limitations and to know what it excels at. Every tool has, every precision, high-functioning, well-made tool has a purpose. And a lot of times you can use it for a few things, but it's not going to do everything. So what the S-System offers in general, I'll say this in general, is the highest level of image quality that Leica offers you. I think hands down, the 07 and now the S3 are going to give you the best image quality, objectively, factoring out whatever other scenario you may be in. Apples to apples, the best image quality. When I say image quality, I mean dynamic range, color sharpness, all those things. So mm -hmm. who needs the best image quality for that? Uh, you think of um, landscape photography. Sure. That's um, what I use it architecture, for. Architecture, studio, um, even travel. I say travel photography because the S007 is quite hand-holdable. Mm -hmm. um, the lenses are a little... Larger. Yeah, I can, yeah. yeah. You would want to pare down on your lens kit. Um, we can I talk probably about that wouldn't too. use it for sports, although I've definitely shot car <laughs> racing and sailboat racing. And, and I've shot beach volleyball. Horse racing. It. I have an article <laughs> about it on Red Dot Forum down below. So you, it's just, again, <laughs> I said you can use it, but it's, you know. It's, it's not, not, ideal. not ideal. It's not ideal. Um, I mean, right, think about this. This camera shoots three frames a second or three and a half, depending on which one you have. Mm -hmm. Autofocus on these lenses is there. Yeah, it's okay. It's but accurate. It's, it's not very fast. accurate, but it's not fast. It's not fast. It's not. When I'm I the first one to say. It. When I compare that against an SL2 that shoots 10 frames a second, and the lens can rack from infinity to close focus Instantly, in yeah. in 20 milliseconds, yeah. this is not the same level. Yeah, yeah, it's not. So that's certainly an area where the SL or any other autofocus system like it makes is going to be superior. Sure. Autofocus speed shooting speed in terms of the burst rate. So that's there's an example of where you would not use mm -mm. an S camera. But if you're chasing the ultimate level of image quality and you're willing to work within the requirements of, of medium format, especially file size and other precise techniques, that's where you would dive in and go with the S system. Uh, either a S2, S006, mm -hmm. S07, or an S3 when they're available um, sort of more widely. Um, yeah, I think that... so. It's not just for professionals anymore, um, especially pre-owned. The three generations that are available pre-owned have come down in price quite a bit. Yeah, uh, medium have, format yeah. does tend to depreciate a lot, which works in the favor of everyone who wants to wait and get one. True. Um, so certainly there are a lot of really affordable options out there for pre-owned, uh, even as, as user sevens. And that makes it a lot more viable for the average like enthusiast versus... Um, and also the... You know, used S lenses are actually also very affordable. Yeah. So there's a lot going in the favor, especially, and, and these things are so robust, although there is a few things that you want to look out for when getting a used S lens or a body. Yeah, we'll obviously. probably get into more of that stuff as um, based on, on some of the questions we get to. But, yeah. Because the question was, who would buy an S camera? So that's, I hope that answered the question. Um, I mean, personally, I this is a landscape machine. Like. Yeah. It just is. Being able to shoot, and I, I say that there are certain cameras that have been touchstones for me in terms of changing fundamentally the way that I take pictures. I think, you know, a camera like the N10 Monochrome has basically changed the way I look at ISO, that it's no longer even a variable because 
I could shoot it at any ISO I want. Yeah. You know, I don't think about it anymore. I don't think about it. Yeah. And that's changed for me. I would also say that the S has changed the way I shoot and approach high dynamic range, challenging light landscape. Because it used to be that I would bracket a lot or I would use you know, graduated filters. Mm -hmm. And I still do both of those techniques, but, but the S allows me to, like we talked about, expose for the highlights, <laughs> yeah. let everything go dark. Monochrome uh, all over again, but not really. Shoot for post. Yeah. If you actually saw my pictures on the back of the camera of the S camera, you would think I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm actually out shooting because they're so grossly underexposed. Yeah. I know exactly what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> he says that, but no, it's true though. It's true. The pictures, if you just see them out of camera, you're, you would look at them and go, well, you gotta take that again, because you messed up. But I didn't. And David's like, no, no. I don't know what I'm doing here. I've done this enough. I'm good, I'm good. And that that's, goes into this whole precision instrument uh, mindset, which again is true with any Leica. You gotta be. know yeah. the tool, it's right? Not just to, it's not just enough to get the tool. You gotta it's, know how to use the tool. You sit down with yourself and you say, all right, I'm now gonna learn how to master this tool. And nobody gets it overnight. David and I definitely don't get it overnight. And we do this professionally. We've been using the S system for 11 we've years. We've both taken a ton of terrible exposures. We've messed up. We've Not done, me. Uh, oh, you especially. <laughs> but to us, that's part of the process. Because yeah. if I can't mess up, if I can't go past the performance envelope or do something totally ridiculous, I'm not going to know where the tool is at its best. And you know, it's funny. I hear a lot of people will ask me either by email or I've had phone conversations or in person. And they always ask me, well, I haven't tried to do X, Y, or Z. Yeah. I haven't tried to shoot it under this lighting, or I yeah. haven't tried to shoot well, it at night. I'm afraid to put it above I'm ISO I'm afraid to yeah. put it. It's like, what are you afraid of? Yeah. Just go out and do you it. You already own it. It's free. The rest of it, the trying around is free. Right. Once you you got to buy it, and then you get it, or borrow it, or rent it, or whatever. And just like, yeah. try it. Just do it. Um, don't be afraid to experiment, because that's how you're going to learn. You're going to learn by doing, by failing, yes. and sometimes succeeding. Yes. Hold on to those successes, remember those failures. Yes. And you can take that not only to become more familiar with your tool, but also to become a better photographer. You're gonna you need right. to experiment. You because need to try. The and less time you spend figuring out your equipment, the more time you're spending actually taking pictures. So At I, the time you need to do it. Right. That's right. what I mean. So once you, you get an SO7 and you spend the first two weeks shooting with it every day in that around the house in the backyard or wherever, just getting a feel for it. So then when you go to your trip to Patagonia, you're not worrying about, wait, which was the button for ISO or what's the yeah, diffraction the last limit? Thing, the last thing you want to do, like, you know, when when the sun is going down and down and down <laughs> yeah, and down, it's like you're waiting hour, for that yeah. one magic moment yeah, yeah. Or, or right before sun rises, the sun just crests over the horizon. You don't have time to be figuring it out then. Right. You need to figure it out 10 minutes before yes, that. Or like 10 weeks before that. <laughs> or no, yeah. intuitively, yeah. I need to be at this. I need to shoot that way. Yeah. This and again, I work. don't expect this to happen for anyone, ourselves included, overnight. And you don't have to do it by yourself. That's what we're here for or whoever you work with. Um, it's about knowing that it's more than just turning it on and pressing the shutter. I know that sounds silly, but the more powerful and precise and, and controllable your tools become, the more mastery over them you need to have to get that res that maximum result out well, of it. That's true of anything. Absolutely, that's true of anything. You I know. mean, think about like, I know these are really tired explanations, uh, there but we go. there we go. <laughs> hey, think about it. Not just a performance car, a race yeah, car. That's right. Or if you gave me a Formula One car, you wouldn't know what to do. I with would it. crash in two seconds. I'd right. be in the wall. I'd and Josh a... and I have actually done a driving school where we learned, yeah, supposedly how to drive better on a track <laughs> and everything. all this stuff. Sorry. We've forgotten all of it. You know, and and it's funny. We went to this performance driving school, mm -hmm. and on like the second day or something, you know, we're we're doing this whole road course. Yeah. And the instructors have walkie talkies in the car. We're like, oh yeah, we're tearing it up. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, it's great. Oh my <laughs> gosh. We're like, uh, and we think we're like the best ever, yeah. right? And we're cutting in these corners and we're tearing it up <laughs> to the slalom, and they're like, okay, turn your traction control off. It's like, <laughs> okay. So you hold the button in for like oh, five man. seconds yeah. and the little light flashes on the dash and you're like, all right. Did and within three seconds, you're facing the other way. You are, That's right. you are 180 That's right. in the grass because what you think that you That's were right. doing. Yeah. We were basically in full auto JPEG. We were in full <laughs> auto JPEG. We were, doing, we were doing good. And like, and we, but we, one, once we switched to raw and manual and we were facing the other way. <laughs> that. So the point is, is that that is. <laughs> but, but didn't that make us a better driver? Yes. I mean, when I you're aware of what can happen yes. when you're not paying attention.
we need to get to the next question. Of course. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did warn everyone. Well, I guess I warned each other that these are going to be long <laughs> answers. I'm sorry for the long answers. Go. All right. I'm ready. Next question from Mohammed. He's asking, what is the 3D pop that people talk about when discussing medium format? Hmm, that's a good question. I think David and I can both answer that. But I'll let start? you go first. Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah. I go. think it's a couple things. Mid-tone contrast at a per pixel level. A very mm -hmm. high level of what they call micro contrast. Something that... Only physics. You need the physics of a large sensor and large pixels to get there. And just like we talked about in the monochrome video, the more efficiently you're using your light gathering pixels, the higher quality image you're going to have. And David talked a bit ago about how Leica designed the system from scratch. Well, that includes the lenses. The lenses are designed with every aspect of the sensor and the camera That's right. factored in. So it's not a matter of, okay, the lens used to just hit a piece of film, and then now it's got to hit a piece of glass and go to a sensor and do this. They designed the sensor cover glass and the filtration Perfectly. into the lens. Yes. Because these lenses That's are That's actually true. Yeah. That, is, that yes. is something that you will not read in the brochure, but it is yeah, absolutely right. true. Yes. And I actually forgot that. But that is, that yes. is a good point. We were talking it's to the engineers, yeah. and we're like, wait, could you repeat that? The cover glass, I don't yes. want to say it because you glossed over it quickly. Yes, yes, yeah, say it again. So a sensor no, has, oh, God, has a cover glass it. over it. <laughs> yes. That's so that you can clean it, the <laughs> dust, and you're not touching the actual right. sensor itself. Yes. It also filters out the infrared light and yes, all that. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. So this cover glass that has a thickness to it. It is an optical surface. Yes. So the Leica design team and the optics team said, "Oh well, that's an element." Hey, we we designed that optical surface. We designed the lenses. We designed the camera. We designed everything. So those lenses yeah. are designed. The optical calculation actually takes into account the thickness and placement of the cover glass in front of the sensor. Yeah. So when you've got how crazy is that? When you've got a system that's streamlined like that. You're going to get a level of image quality. You're going to get that pop that you're not going to see. That next level. Even in the, thinking about M cameras and all these other cameras that have had lenses for 70, 80, whatever years, um, you know, because the S system was designed from scratch for that exact reason. And those mm -hmm. lenses weren't designed to work on any other camera. It wasn't like Lego was saying, okay, we got to make a lens that fits this and it fits that. All from scratch. Yeah. You're going to get something that you never would have had. Um, They're pretty special. Else. I think, yeah. and, and I'll kind of take, take my shot here, which yeah. is, and I covered it a little bit. Um, I didn't mention it at the start, but I did about two two weeks ago. Published a an S lens. It's in the description. Com right? Compendium. Yeah. It's in the yeah. description. Yeah. So on Red Dot Forum, I decided that you know with the S three coming up and all this, uh, I just wanted to revisit, and it was really cool for me to go back and look at shots that I had taken with certain lenses, and I tried to include actually all four generations of S camera S two double O six. 007 and S3, yeah. Imagine, imaginary S3. That's right, it's right here. But I did shoot with the <laughs> S3, so I have samples. Yes. Uh, and I wanted to include and show not just the quality of the lenses on the current cameras, but also how good these files are from the S2 sure. and the sure. 006 sure. as well. Yeah, they still have that pop. They that still has, have that pop. Just because there's newer models doesn't make the older pictures suddenly look worse. They, <laughs> they don't. They still look amazing. They don't, and like we talked about several sessions ago, Yeah. I reprocessed them using the current version mm, of Lightroom, yes. and ooh, oh Game man, time. those S2 files were like yeah. amazing. Right, we're talking 12 years of development. Wow, yeah. they were so good. So I really noticed a visible improvement in the color fidelity, the tonality, yes. the yeah. shadow improvements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was actually, I was amazed. Um, so if you check out the article, there's a link down below. You can see sample images, kind of a wide variety of samples from all the different cameras with all the different lenses. And as I talked in there, um, and I'll just briefly touch on it because you can read about it, but basically because there's a negative crop factor of 0 0.8, mm -hmm. what that means is that you're shooting a longer focal length with a wider field of view. Well, Essentially. I think I we're going to get into lenses. I just feel but like we, I think we should that, make sure we answer the questions. But that's <laughs> part of why you see that dimensionality. Okay, okay, okay. Because you're shooting basically <laughs> a 35 field of view yeah. with a 50 focal length, yeah. with the compression of a 50. So you're going to naturally get more separation with a longer lens than you will with a wider lens. It's why you yeah. get no separation whatsoever yes. with a phone. Very true. Because it's like a half a millimeter lens or yeah, something very stupid. Very tiny. So Very tiny. Oh, that's a long answer, but I think, again, because we're so passionate about this system, and because we've kind of grown up with it, that's why we. Yeah, are, we're, even me, I'll, I'm a little more rambly than um, a little bit than usual. So, but that's a good question. 
Um, I think we've answered it, so let's go to the I next think so. one. I think so. <laughs> let's go to the next one. The answer is right. because. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So we have a question from Richard and David. They both asked, what would be your two or three lens travel kit uh, with the S system? Well, I think we each are going to have different answers to that. We are going to have different answers. David, you go first. I went first last time. Uh, if I could only pick two, two where am I traveling? Wait. <laughs> it's like, no, just two. I'll yeah, tell you my yeah. two most used lenses in the, in the S system. Bar none, the 45 and the 120. The 45 is okay. right here. Right here. The old 45. This is David's favorite lens. Don't even get him started on this thing because he will talk about it until he's blue in the face. And maybe not even my favorite lens on the S system. This is one of my all time favorite lenses on Wait, any system. That's saying something. And it is, it's big. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it is equivalent to a 35 millimeter. It is a, a 45 2.8. But again, if you read my article, because the sensor crop, it's actually equivalent to a 35, 2.4, I believe. 2.2, uh, I think? 2.2. You wrote the article. I wrote it? the article, but <laughs> I have any numbers. Too many numbers. So I actually have a chart about this. But oh, no. Yeah. Let's, let's not show charts right now. We're talking about our two favorite No, no, we're not showing it. I'm just okay, looking at it. Okay, 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 okay. So I'm reeling you back in. I know how, I know how yeah, it's going. Yeah, so the 45 is one, and I love it. It's basically you can shoot portraits with this. Environmental portraits is amazing. You can shoot landscape at infinity. Uh, it just does everything well. There's nothing this 45 can't handle. And it's, it's, I think it really balances sharpness as well as smoothness. Mm -hmm. That's a weird thing, but right. no, I, I, I think you would agree with that. Yeah, I shot with that today, so. Yeah. I and, it, yeah, and the other lens that I'm a huge fan of is the, yeah. The 120. Mm, yeah, delicious. which is which is also not just one of my favorite S lenses, but it's one of my favorite all-time lenses. This lens is amazing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's got a floating element design. It's apochromatic. Uh, so it's as good close focus. It does a, it's a half life size macro, one to two, but it's equally sharp at infinity as it is wide open, or as it is close focus rather, and as sharp, let's say at F8, as it is at F2.5. Yeah. And because of that crop factor, this is a equivalent to a uh, like a 95 millimeter f2. Yeah. Yeah. And I love its flexibility because it's a telephoto, plus it's a macro lens, and it is just lusciously beautiful, crisp where you want it, and just buttery smooth bokeh. Super super nice bokeh. This okay, is so amazing. To summarize, the 45 and the 120 is your two lens kit for me. Yeah. See, what for about me, you? I don't shoot a lot of wide angle um, with the S system, mostly because of what I shoot. So I'm 70 180. I think the okay. 70. That's the 70. I'll because show it's the smallest. It has extremely good close focus up to uh, 20 inches, which is the same distance the 120 focuses at, although it doesn't. That's a, is it a third of a meter? Yeah. It's yeah. Close. Really close. Um, it's the smallest lens. It's 4. got. 4.4 meters. Yeah. It's also, I think, the most. Um, Durable. <laughs> well, look at you can see this one has been a little chewed up. But right? look at the front of that lens. There is actually a essentially a built-in clear filter. I'm gonna to knock that lens. Because I'm gonna, it, I'm gonna make people. So when David, right when David is tapping, it's actually not an image-forming lens element. It Correct. is a protective, thick piece of glass. Very in thick. I don't, and I, I like the sound of it. So there you go. This this really feels like it's indestructible. So that I like the 70, and then I like the 180 because I love to have reach in my shots. I love the compression. Here's the I think the 180 is one of the sharpest lenses in the S system, which is saying something. It's equivalent to a 144 millimeter. So this is a 180 f 3.5, and this is about a one, uh, 144 millimeter like a 2.8, 2 .8. 2 yeah, 8, yeah mm -hmm. uh, if you were to convert it. Um, I love, I love, love, love this lens. I don't obviously shoot a lot of low light with it because you do have to hold it pretty steady, but I don't shoot a lot of low light with the S. I shoot mostly cars and car related things, which happen during the day. So, and, and what's interesting about a lot of these lenses, you'll notice that on this, you may have noticed on the 70, the 180, you see that I'm, I'm turning the focus. It's all internal focusing in these lenses because. Yeah. Except for. Except for the 120. Yes. Uh, with the 120, as I showed here, because it's a macro lens, they would have had it. It's pretty compact, actually. It's a lot, it's somewhat smaller than the 180. Mm -hmm. But you can see as I focus it, you have this front piece protrude out. Uh, it is still weather sealed. There's actually a gasket around the uh, inner barrel here, an outer barrel. But the other lenses, I would say, are more durable because they're completely sealed from front element to, yeah. to lens mount. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and that's why the 70 to 180, they've also been around for a long time, so maybe I've just grown to love them over time. The, the two original lenses. But I, I just think the 70 is 
really nice for Fortress Wide Open. It's got a really nice rendering in 2.5. It's um, not as clinical or super crazy sharp as the 120. I think it's a lot like the 51.4 M lens. Yeah, I think that's It fair. has a very, very yeah. similar look to it. Yes, actually. And, and it is a modified double gauss, just there like we go. the 50. So there's a lot of uh, similarities there. So There is. Okay. No, I don't want to get into that further. I think we answered the question. Let's get on to the next one. All right, sounds good. What improvements has Leica made from the Type 007 to the S3? Oh, that's a David question. David has had the most time with the S3 of anyone I know. So Number one, brand new sensor. Uh, they have gone from a 37 and a half megapixel CMOS sensor that we know and love to a 64 megapixel CMOS sensor, dual gain architecture. Uh, also, it is, yeah, they've expanded the ISO range all the way to, from I think 100 to 50,000. Yeah. Yep. From what, 100 to 12,500, right? Yeah, right. So you had 12,500 yeah. on the 07, mm -hmm. and now you've got 50,000 max ISO on the S3. Yeah, and in my testing, I would say that it's 12,500 is definitely better than 12,500 on the 007. Yeah. I'd think it's, Say it's one one and a half stops improvement in terms of noise performance in in the normal range, but because of that dual gain architecture, it can go a little higher. Uh, it might even be usable depending on what your criteria is, what you're using it for. You could actually shoot at twenty five thousand ISO on it, yeah. which is pretty crazy to say for medium format. Uh, the other thing is they've reformulated reformulated the color filter array. So the, the red, green, and blue filtration you have on the sensor to make it a color camera. See our monochrome video from last week for more mm -hmm. information on that. Mm -hmm. They reformulated that red filter very, very specifically to more accurately portray skin tones. Mm. Because again, that professional bent and studio photography and fashion usage of the S, they wanted to really get those accurate skin tones. As well as commercial photography applications like cars. So you're probably going to love this. That's right. I can't wait. it to like a I'm Ferrari done. show, right? Oh, it's going to be awesome. Think Super about yeah. like a sea of red Ferraris. Know, it's like made for that. It's made for me, this camera. How, how easy is it to shoot that red? Extremely difficult. Uh, oh my gosh, yeah, right? With any digital camera. It's yeah. one of the hardest colors to shoot. Yeah. Period. Especially bright, saturated red and bright light. What is, what's the name for Ferrari red? Rosa Corsa. Rosa Corsa red. Yeah. Um, another one would be like the um, the yellow on a, on a 911. The yellow on a 911 is really hard to shoot. Speed but again... Yellow. Speed yellow, but have, see, he knows that. <laughs> but having uh, this reformulated red filter is gonna help with reds and yellows. Uh, so this is it's kind of like, a, I mean, this is not exactly the way you wanna think about it, but if you were looking at a monitor, having a higher gamut monitor, like having a, uh, an Adobe RGB monitor versus an sRGB monitor, imagine that this color filter will broaden up the color gamut in those tones. So that's pretty significant if that's what's really important to your photography, like Josh. Uh, if you're shooting cars, yes. you really want that. If now, you're shooting people, you want that. Now, if I remember correctly, what, what is the, did they increase the long exposure time on the... Uh, they did. They that did, is right? another... Like, yeah. I can't remember what it was. That is another big deal, and that's going to be a more for landscape photographers. What, what is it, actually? Now? Uh, so we've gone... Originally, when the, when the S007 came out, right. it was capped at... at 60, a, 60 seconds. Yeah, one, minute, 60 one seconds. minute exposure, 60 yes. seconds. And then there was a firmware update to lengthen that to 125 seconds. Two minutes. It's still kind of limiting for some situations. And yeah. that, remember, that's 125 seconds at base ISO. As right. you go up in ISO, that number goes down. Uh, so at 1600, you might only be able to shoot, I think, four or eight yeah, seconds. We have a chart on Red.Form, actually, we do. in one of the firmware update articles, yep. where they added that feature. Yeah, where, where, the, new, down, yeah, yeah. where, where the new breakdown is. Yeah. Now, the new one, the S3, actually lengthens that to a full eight minutes, which is, now we're talking. That's seriously long exposure. That's, now we're seriously talking. Seriously long. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing when you consider that's a quadruple. Yeah. Right? Quadruple, and, and what I think is impressive is they basically doubled from 37 to 64. That is pretty much double, right? Yeah. Almost exactly. Almost. Uh, a little less. No, a little less. Sorry, 70, 70, 70, 74, 74 or something. Yeah. It's close. It's close enough. It's really close. Nearly double. And yet, they went from three and a half frames per second on the S007, and they were able to maintain three frames a second at 64 okay. megapixel right. at full bit depth. So almost twice as much data. Yeah. It was improved image quality, improved a little everything. Yeah. yeah. And just a fraction slower in terms of the burst rate, yeah. which and, is amazing. And because it's got that Maestro 2 image processor in there, it's... That, that's a fast processor. Um, it's spec'd at 
basically it's a, an ASIC. So it's like a system on a chip and it can decode natively hardware level 320 megapixels per second. So if you it's imagine how many <laughs> 64 megapixel five, things, right? Five, right? So now imagine you've shot DNG only and you want to pull up the image on the, on the screen and zoom into 100%. Well, there's no delay because it can decode right, that in that real time. Yeah. The, the only thing, and I will warn about this, there is a slight delay versus the 007. And the reason is a simple one. You're now limited to the read speed of the SD card. Mm. So if you have a card that's 90 megasecond read, you're going to wait yeah. half a second to get that file off the card into the camera's memory. Before, you had files that were much smaller. Right. You know, uh, so card speed becomes much more important card? with yes, the S3. Very I think is so. the point you're trying to make. I actually forgot the question that was asked. What was it? Oh, right, improvements. In improvements. Right. So that, that's improvement, right. <laughs> and, it's um, so much. That's, I mean. Those are the big ones. Those I are the big, oh, oh no, video. Oh, uh, <laughs> you forgot about video. <laughs> that's, that's, so that's in addition, in yeah. addition, uh, the S007 was actually the, it was the first medium format camera to shoot 4K. Mm -hmm. But you had to do it in a Super 35 crop. Super 35 is code for APS-C. Yeah. So you have a sensor that big, and you have to shoot uh, an image like <laughs> like that big. Yeah, tiny. Uh, really tiny, a really large crop. I think it was a 2x crop. Yeah. Which makes your wide lenses sort of useless. Yeah. So that was a, a problem. Uh, on the S3, you can now shoot full width, 45 millimeter wide. So this whole sensor, 4K. With a caveat, uh, you can't shoot it over HDMI because the HDMI hardware they're using uh, isn't able to carry the signal, which I'm a bit disappointed in that. Yeah. But they did upgrade the internal electronics so you can re record to an SD card and shoot 10-bit 422 DCI 4K 30 frames a second. Um, Whatever and, that means, right? <laughs> right, up to 430 megabits per second data rate, which is, it's very low compression. Yeah. So you're going to be getting a really high quality file, which brings me back to my initial warning. You really got to use a fast card because yeah. uh, that's a lot of the data. The same card we recommend in every video sticks well, here, right? Mm, no? For video, I'd still recommend the Sony Tough. Okay. Sony okay. Tough card. But honestly, I, I don't know. I don't think the S3 is the camera you're going to do a lot of video with. But well, it's cool. you certainly can. If you're in the field and somewhere cool and you want to do a cool HD video, you can do it. So yeah, for sure, no big deal. So, that, so those are the big points. That's the big points. Okay, so that was a good question. And when we have an S3 and we've had more time to play with one, obviously we'll have even more insight in terms yeah. of like the real material differences. But okay, Whew. next question. All right, we're on it. Can you explain the dual gain sensor compared to the S007 CMOS? Uh, so so dual gain just means that it. I think a good analogy here is a lot of people have ridden a bicycle before, right? Everyone's ridden like a multi-speed bicycle, an 18-speed bike. I'm about to lose Josh. Okay. I have rode up to high school every day on my bicycle. I'll tell <laughs> He's you. He's like, wait, how many cylinder engine is that? I had that? a Huffy. It was a 10-speed. A 10-speed. Ten ten speed. Okay, so a 10-speed or let's say an 18-speed road bike. Now, you might be aware that there is a series of gears on your rear wheel, right, on your rear axle. There's another series of gears, usually two, sometimes three, on by your pedals. And you have kind of, imagine you just have two. You have a, a high speed and a low speed gear. One has torque to get you going, and the other is going to be geared so that you don't have to pedal as fast. And then it uses the same series of gears to basically amp up as you're going a little bit faster. So you have the main two gears, and then you have the small gears. Imagine your small gears are the small steps, 100 to 200 ISO, 200 to 400. Now imagine that gain that's applied to make those small steps, you have kind of a big high gear, low gear switch. And that's kind of what they're doing in electronics. So they're able to switch it to that higher gear when you get it to higher ISO, and then use the smaller gears to ramp up and get discrete gain at smaller levels. I don't know specifically where that that dual base right. is. That's so like proprietary. It's kind of proprietary. Info, and yeah. maybe we'll find this information out from like at some point in the future. But I would say that, you know, obviously the, the low gear is at 100. And 
we can take a guess and say the high gear is somewhere at 1600 or 3200 but that's my guess that's not that's right. not not official don't There's take my word for David's it it's guess yeah my my current guess based on images that i've seen because that means that what will happen is it kind of locks in exposure and noise um, where now maybe you'd start to be losing it by 6400 or 12500 but because we've kind of kicked it into overdrive so to speak uh, it has a second pseudo native iso i'm trying to kind of give a yeah. non technical answer to a technical it question it make good pictures that's what matters <laughs> miracle of german engineering uh, yeah it it's but essentially we could do a whole video on like sensors and stuff yep. i haven't thought about that before but it, but essentially that's what you're doing right yeah. so imagine you know go back to your 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 i ride a bicycle and you know two gears right you got it, it. Okay. I think we got it. Okay. Jose, what do we got next? Right. That's a good question. Get me out of there. Getting a little abstract now. <laughs> All right. Next question comes from our friend David Noble. Hey, uh, David. Hi, David. If you could create any S lens that doesn't exist, which one would it be? A five millimeter, five hundred millimeter f one point eight. That was a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> next question. You got to give a serious answer on this. Oh, uh, fine. What um, do you think? What do you think they should come out with? Um, in the future sometime. I would love to see something longer than 180, as okay. much of a dream as that probably is. Like, 250? A, like a 250 F4. Ooh, that would yeah. be sick. Mm. Um, or... Do you want to explain why they did it in the first place? We didn't what? Why isn't there a longer lens in the system than 180? Well, number one, to be huge. Besides the huge. Number two, it would be impossible to handhold. With what camera? With an S2, because you went to ISO... After ISO 640 12, on the 12, S2. 5, 12, I'm saying, but above ISO 640, you could barely use the darn thing, so... Um, so you had a limited yeah, ISO range, right. which means you had a limited and shutter speed range. Remember how Leica is a small company, and they for the lens to justify itself, it yeah. had to be thirty thousand dollars just for the amount that they'd sell. Yeah, but they'd right. sell ten. Um, okay, so a two fifty. Okay, I'd like, like a two fifty f four, three hundred f four, something like that. Final answer. Well, if I had to pick a second one, maybe like a medium zoom. Like then what? I can have a thirty to ninety, and then a ninety to two hundred or something. Or Ooh, 90 to that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I have two zooms for my car stuff, where I'm, I don't need max on aperture. And you were complaining about a really heavy, big lens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just need to go to the gym. That's all. Okay, David, yeah. what's, what's your what's your dream lens then? Um, I feel like sometimes there's too much of a gap between forty five and seventy. Ooh, good point. Yeah, I kind of like you to win see this one. like a. 50, 55. Or, well, 55, yeah, 50, 55, 50 is too close. Yeah. A 55 would be cool. Yeah. Um, or like an 85, somewhere in that kind I think of middle like, range. I like a 55 F2, because Ooh. we could fill that gap and also Ooh, be a little bit different. Yeah. So maybe like the 100 F2, but like it's younger brother um, would be really cool. So if I you're like listening, that. like, a, please make a 5 to 500. <laughs> <laughs> nice to dream. Um, yeah. All right. That was a good Her question, chance though. to dream. What do we got next? All right. What applications will you use the central shutter lens models for? Oh, that is a great it's question. funny. I have an article all about that. David does have an article about that, but obviously we can answer that question. Um, one of the lenses we have here... The 120. ...is CS. So if I hold it up... Um, you have it towards you? Once, once Jose uh, does his magic. So Leica makes two series well, of lenses. We'll just say, what does CS stand for? Well, I'm getting there. Okay. They make the regular ones, and they make the CS models. Uh, <laughs> CS, right there. CS stands for central shutter, more colloquially known as a leaf shutter. Mm -hmm. So instead of a uh, focal plane shutter, which the camera has built in, you have a leaf shutter. The leaf shutter is in the lens. That's why the lenses are branded as such. So this lens is a 120 CS. That means it has inside of it, you can't see it, but it has inside, I promise, a leaf shutter. The advantage of a leaf shutter is that you can sync with external flash units. I'm not talking about a Leica flash, like an SF40 or something. I'm talking about like a Profoto or a Broncolor or Power Pack. You can sync. I think we need to be specific. We're yeah. not talking about a little on-camera flash. Right, like We're talking about strobes. a battery generator yeah. that weighs about 20 pounds. Yeah, big, the big thing, yeah. That studio strobes yes. on light stands yeah. plug into yes. with soft boxes yeah. they get and they assistance, get they get like they get real lights. <laughs> okay. I just want to clarify Anyway, that. so... The native uh, flash sync speed of the S is 1 125th of a second because you're limited by the focal plane shutter's ability to sync. So normally, let's say you're outdoors, you're on the beach, you're doing a, a photo um, a modeling shoot and you've got these strobes and it's bright. Well, at a 1 25th of a second, even at like F11, there's going to be too much ambient light. It's going to be grossly overexposed. Also, you may not want to shoot at F11. You may want to shoot wide open. So To get that the, beautiful yeah, three-dimensionality. Yeah. yeah. 
So the leaf shutter, the central shutter, allows you to sync up to one one thousandth of a second. So many, many, many times faster with your external strobes. So if you have a leaf shutter lens, you could be on the beach, you could be wide open f2.5 or f4, or whatever, shoot it at a thousandth of a second with the strobes, get the bokeh you want without getting an overexposed image. Right, and suddenly, instead of having to stop down to f11, f16... Yeah, or use an ND filter. Or use an ND filter, right. which means you have to use way more flash power, more which flash means power. you need to bring a lot more big batteries work, that are yeah, really exactly. heavy and mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. That means you can shoot at a thousandth of a second yeah. at, at f4 or f6 and get that beautiful separation because f4 on medium format is more like 2.8, now, not f4. Let me address one important factor here is that you've still got the focal plane shutter there, which has to open and close. Because a lot of people in the old school days of like Hasselblad will remember mm. that a, a leaf shutter vibrates less and therefore less allows you to- parts. Right, has less, less moving parts. So it does allow you to shoot at slower shutter speeds with less camera vibration, less shake. So some people will say, oh, should I buy a CS lens so there's less shake? No. No, because you still have to open and close the focal plane shutter in the camera. Part of that. So the sensor and the, is And the mirror to still light. has to go up and everything. Right, yeah. so there's no advantage to vibration or, or shake or anything like that. The only advantage, the only advantage is you can sync with your flashes at a higher shutter speed. That's it. And not just any flashes. Right. Strobes, Strobes. that are capable. Yes. And I should say, Strobes that are capable of syncing at a thousandth of a now, second, which is the, not all. If the next follow-up question is inevitably, well, why aren't just why not just have a leaf shutter and nothing else? Mm. That's because your leaf shutter has a limit to its fastest speed. In fact, a thousandth of a second is as is fast not, as that yeah. leaf shutter can fire. That's really fast because when they first set out to design this CS mechanism, yeah. which was all done in house, by the way, it's not a outside mm -hmm. thing. Like a fully engineered this leaf shutter system, and. Originally, when they launched, they're like, we're going to have 500th of a second. Right, which is a big deal. And they're like, well, we were able to squeeze out a whole full yeah. stop extra. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, that's as fast as it goes. So what that's if you're in very, a situation... That's very fast. Well, what if you're in a situation that requires a faster speed than that? That's where the focal plane shutter comes in. Because the focal plane shutter goes to a 4,000th. So focal plane shutters are capable of a higher sort of maximum, maximum, speed, maximum yeah. speed or minimum speed, I guess, technically. Um, minimum like speed. Counterintuitive. <laughs> minimum yeah. speed. A faster maximum shutter speed or minimum shutter speed, whereas leaf shutter syncs with the uh, strobes faster. So they have advantages and disadvantages. The, the cool part is, um, you want to show them on the back of the camera sure. there, David, any camera. Any of these, The yes. power switch of the S camera, all the cameras, has two positions, well, three positions, off, off, FPS, and CS. So if you have a CS lens attached, you can switch it to FPS. In fact, watch what it's going to say on the screen. It's off. Nope, there uh, it is. There it is. Lens See what it says? So if you put the camera power switch to FPS, focal plane shutter, you're using the focal plane shutter and you can shoot up to a 4,000th of a second and you're yep. syncing with strobes at a 1 one twenty fifth. If you put the switch on CS, you're now using the lens's central shutter, you're syncing with your strobes at a 1,000th of a second, but that also is your fastest maximum speed. Right. So you get the best of both. When well, you the, ca the camera is actually pretty smart. So if you're on CS, mm -hmm and you dial in a faster mm, it shutter speed, out. it automatically switches over to the focal plane shutter. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And the, the, the leaf shutter is actually, the blades are carbon fiber. I've seen pictures. It's pretty they awesome. are really it's cool, pretty yeah. awesome. Um, and all the, there's no um, like lubrication inside. There's no like liquid lubrication. It's all like ceramic bearings and stuff. So there's no like loose material. It's amazing the way they Fancy do Fancy pants so, engineering right insane. there. Um, space, whew. space age well, materials. Answer. So if you want to know more about that or see examples, read, read the David's, article on the lenses. Yeah, read the article. I cover so, it. Uh, next question. But Josh's point yes. is so valid. Yes. You're not getting less vibration yes. with central shutter lenses, yes. and they do weigh a little more. Slightly. Slightly, 100 like grams. 100 grams yeah. more. Yeah. Next question. All right. Can you use SO lenses on an S? No. No. You can go the other way around. You can, this is a, uh, a Leica SL2. And we talked about this in the SL2 uh, live stream, actually. This is a Leica SL2 with a um, S70 attached using the S adapter L. That works because the S lenses cover a larger size format than the SL's SL2 sensor. So it goes backwards, it works like that. But the SL lenses cover a smaller sensor than the S. So you can't put an SL lens or any 35 millimeter lens on an S camera or any medium format camera, generally, because they don't cover the full sensor. That's the short answer to that. Now, I, we, we did again talk about this in the SL live stream, but using S lenses on the SL or the SL2 is actually pretty fun. You have full autofocus, full aperture control, and the S adapter L is weather sealed because the S lenses are weather sealed. The SL2 and the SL are weather sealed. So 
it would be a shame if Leica made the adapter not weather sealed because you'd lose it. <laughs> yeah. So Leica was smart. They made the adapter weather sealed. So now, using S lenses adapted to the SL or the SL2, you maintain that weather sealing and all of those other functionalities. And of course, you're actually getting that really cool rendering of the S lenses. So it's a kind of a different way to shoot the SL2 while still having autofocus and all those things. And they give you a little um, tripod foot on the bottom as well. Yeah, which, which is really nice. cool. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, S lenses on the SL are or the SL2 are very viable, either as a backup body if to, or, or, or a companion body. Now, did you already say, S. does the image stabilization work on there? Oh, that's right. Of course, you get yeah. image stabilization. These lines become stabilized as well on the SL2, which is amazing. But even mm -hmm. the original SL, mm -hmm. for the $22 to $2,500 that they're selling for right now, it's a great backup. You get an SL, you get the S adapter L to complement your S kit. And you've got a second body, or backup body, a complementary body, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. You've got them both. And you could build your SL kit from there if you want, or just stick with S lenses if you want. Yeah, Leica has like has been really cool about, you know, even though the the L mount, well, before they opened it up to their partners, uh, in the the L mount alliance, the L mount was proprietary. The S mount is proprietary. But the fact of the matter being having all these adapters where we can take lenses and use yeah. medium format lenses on a thirty five camera. Sweet. You can use APS lenses on that 35 camera. Yes, you can go either way, actually. Right. Like, it's quite clever. So, and yeah, it, it's S really lenses, flexible. Um, on the SL2 or the SL have actually quite a lot of functionality. Of course, the autofocus is still slower than an SL lens, considerably. Let's just get that out of the way. And it's a little noisier. So it's well, there not... are a lot heavier lenses in right, terms of Right, there's more glass. glass that has to move. So that's but well, that's fine. I accept that limitation because I know I know these tools. I know what they can do. I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. Fire away, Mr. Farkas. Well, since these are medium format lenses, yes. and you're using it on a smaller format camera, yes. the, does that mean that the focal length changes? No. Do I need a, don't I need a crop factor? You don't, actually, because Leica, all of Leica's lenses are named according to a full frame 35 millimeter focal length. Oh. So if you put, we have a dog. Um, there he is. chilling. If you put a 180 S lens on an S007, it's equivalent to about a 144. Mm -hmm. But you put a 180 S lens on an SL or an SL2, it's a 180. So that's it. Okay. So if I take a 70 millimeter lens and I put it onto the SL, mm -hmm. it's going to be just like if I had similar to a 75 SL native lens. Very close. Yes. Yeah. Okay. A few millimeters different. So it does, yeah, there are, there's no crop factor. There's no math you have to do. You put a 70 on the SL or the SL2, it's a 70. The only math you got to do is when you put it on an S camera. There's that. And then you got to multiply by 0 0.8. That's correct. 80%. Yeah. Uh, if well, I can add one quick tip um, from John Kreidler that I remember he told me. Sure. Whenever you're shooting S lenses on an SL2, Make sure you turn the camera off before switching lenses. Yes, Might good safety some... tip. Yeah, there is um, just a workflow that you that I'll, and I'll mention this definitively here. If you have the S adapter L, and you're putting S lenses on your SL or your SL2, whether you attach, remove the lens or the adapter, the camera has to be powered off. If you are doing that, I think it has to do with the voltage because it is driving a yeah. much larger autofocus system. Yeah. Uh, the motors are are definitely heftier in these lenses, uh, and I just think it there's a potential for yeah. right. bad things happening. Right. So just that's it. If you have the acid, the S adapter L, if you have it, if you're using it in any scenario where you're touching that release button, just turn it off. Turn off the camera. Just putting that out there as a disclaimer. Thank you, John Kreiler. Thank you, John Kreiler, for good reminder. Uh, don't mind the dog. He just wants some pets. <laughs> He's blocked by some lenses. So He's making lenses. an a mid, a mid episode appearance uh, today, which is fine. All right, we can keep going. We can keep going. Yeah, yeah, Jose, what do we got? So on this topic, uh, Nelson is asking, what is the equivalent maximum aperture of the 100 millimeter Summicron S on Ooh. an SL2? I, I'm I'm actually looking this up. 1.6. Here, 80 percent. Uh, can you pop over to the screen real quick, just so everyone sees? Oh yes. So this is, as you can see here, the right, We're not answering any more questions about right. I'm kidding. <laughs> definitive guide to Leica S We're going to test you on this, and then you're allowed to ask questions on about this. On Red Dot yeah. Forum, OK? David spent forever putting this together. And, and just so you know, yeah. that's how I usually carry my S lenses Oh, around. don't show people that, David. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, and I show kind of the crop factor well, and all this get stuff. Get to the 100. Get to the 100. So we can answer We're that We're getting question. to the 100. We're getting to the 100. Con control F 100. Nah, that's OK. <laughs> Okay, it's all right. We're getting there. We're getting yeah, there. No, you missed it. You passed it. No, there's a there's a table. I'm going. Oh, to the table. the table. Of course, there's a table. Let's, let's try oh, and there's about the sunshine. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. There we go. So this is. Let me bring it up bigger. Eh. Bring it up smaller. Come on. There we go. 
Okay, so if we take a look at the 100, which is right here, we've got the 100, which is equivalent to an 80 millimeter f1.5. There you go, 1.5. And now you know. So these are all, if you want to see the equivalents, you can either just screen capture that. Uh, let me move this off to the right so I'm not Just go to it. Red Forum and look at this article. Because yep. David breaks out every single autofocus uh, yep. S lens. We didn't have the 120 tilt shift in there. But everything else we have Correct. there, we go through everything you need to know. It's actually very digestible. It's broken down by lens. There's sample images with each lens. There's on the 100, it. yeah. And it's not like it's all shot with the S3. There's S2 images in there, yeah. 06, 07. There's so many. Uh, so no matter which S camera you have, you can see um, that he's been using them. So definitely yeah. take a look at this article. He works really, really hard on it. And it's, I think, now the definitive place online to get information about um, how the S lenses work and to see sample images. So, And I went back over 10 years of photographs to yeah. try to pick ones that I thought were you know, kind of representative of the of the character and the feel and what I like about those lenses. So. I don't know what Enzo's Check it out. sniffing over here. Well, there was uh, T R E A T S over there. No, no, I have a, like a little water cup in here. He's decided he's thirsty, so he's not. Oh, <laughs> life's what a, tough. What a good boy. Life's tough. So don't mind, don't mind the dog. Um, okay, next question. That was a good question, though. All right, sounds good. Um, so we're still on the topic of lenses. Okay, we like lenses. All right. <laughs> How do third-party lenses work on the Type 007? Ah, you got them over there. Good question. So. Leica makes a pretty good variety of lens adapters for the S cameras. He's literally drinking out of my water cup. <laughs> you probably hear it. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, that's definitely gonna sound. <laughs> I guess I, I guess so much for hydrating during the live stream. A little oh. bit of a uh, dog oh. mouth water now for it's me. It's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna is, get my drink. You're gonna, you're gonna, yep. you're gonna mm -hmm. spite me now. Mm. He's literally as long as he's never done this before. This is hilarious. Oh my God, he's still going. Yeah, normally he's good? like passed out. Are you good, out. bro? Are you good? Unbelievable. Anyway, <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, third party lenses. Third party so, lenses, how do we adapt them? There's two kinds of adapters that Leica makes. What I call dumb adapters, or they're fully mechanical, and smart adapters that incorporate the third party lenses autofocus. So within the Leica ecosystem, you've got Hasselblad V system, Pentax 67 system, and Mamiya 645. Those lenses are manual, manual focus, manual aperture, and there are a few different, we can get the close up here. And just to clarify, some people may not know those terms. Hasselblad V system yeah. is like a 500 CM or 501. Right. Uh, those are leaf shutter lenses. There we go. Uh, rotating. But, yep. Rotating. So this is the Pentax 6.7 adapter. Or no, sorry, this is the Hasselblad V adapter. Yep. This is the Mami adapter. This is the Pentax 6.7 adapter. Um, so these lenses will mount on any S camera, and you do get focus confirmation in terms of um, like a focus confirmation light in the finder, which is nice. I would recommend, while well, I have the close-up shot, well, I don't think I have one here, the micro prism, well, split prism focusing screen, which is really nice for manual focus um, on the S cameras. And there's also the, what I call smart adapters. I have one of them here, which is the Contax 645 Leica S adapter C. So if you have, for example, thank you, Michael, for letting us borrow your contacts lenses. This is a contacts 80 millimeter F2 from the 645 AF system. It is an autofocus lens. You can adapt, uh, put the adapter on this lens like so, and then pop this on. I'll just stay with the close-up pose so we can show them this. Uh, here we go. So now I've got a contacts 80 millimeter F2 with the S adapter C on a 007, and you can demonstrate the focus. Yep. There we go. It, I'm just having uh, half that one is shutter. not internal autofocus. No, definitely not. It's, it's a cool lens, though. Yeah. You and it get. and it actually balances and looks yeah. really nice on there. But let's be real here. These lenses are nowhere near the quality of Leica glass. And even these lenses that in their day were legendary for their sharpness. Listen, I'm going to give some credit. Contax yeah. made some good lenses. No doubt. But the thing is. Well, S lenses were designed from scratch around this body. That's You're true. You're just not going That's to true. get the level of performance. I would say this, specifically on the 007 and the S3, where you have live view, so you can really, really dial in the focus precisely. Yeah. It's similar to using um, older M lenses on an SL2. Okay. In the sense that it's not superior. You have no weather sealing, no autofocus, no electronic aperture control. Um, but it is fun. Mm -hmm. It is fun to get a different look. It's fun to get a different focal length than you normally have. Um, this. Well, is, is a nice. 210 millimeter f4. We talked about Josh wanting a longer lens. Yep. This is a 1.4x teleconverter. 
So you can actually make a 390 millimeter f5.6, about a 405.6, wow. with context lenses. So there's actually a lot of versatility. Again, you are not getting the full image quality. You're just not. But it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, and, and there is lens. Let's let's say like, what about the 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 famed 350 Apo Teletessar? I mean, we've used it. Um, we've played with it. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's huge. But again, actually, we've done we've used a 400 millimeter. Remember that one? Yes, I do remember. So we've Dave and I have played with these lenses over the years. Um, wide open, they have a lot of chromatic aberration. Mm -hmm. They're just not they're not designed around that digital sensor. But stop down, especially for lenses that don't um, complement but actually augment mm -hmm. the system, like a 350 or a 50 or an 80. Um, they're, they work quite well. I don't think I would have an S camera and only um, alternative lenses. Maybe if you were starting, sure. Let's say you had a bunch of V lenses. Yeah. Okay, you get an S007, uh, you get a V adapter, and you can build and start and play. But you're going to want at least one S lens. I mean, look, I'm going to say early on when we had, let's say, 3570, 120, 180, a really popular alternative lens was either, actually, it was made in contacts and in, and in Hasselblad. Was the the 100 millimeter uh, or the 110 f2? The fe, the 110 f2 fe. 110 yeah, f2 yeah, fe, and yeah, there was yeah. a context version too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, at this Zeiss design, and people loved it. But guess what? We now have that. I'm doing my dog. I treat. can't reach it. Come here, it's man. over there. Which one? The 100. Sit. Yeah. There we go. Right. Thank, so we, thank you, Rob. For thank you, Rob. Uh, by the way. But we, we now it. have <laughs> the 100 millimeter. F2 Summicron. And this is, like I said, an, like an 80 millimeter 1.5. And it's really compact. But let me tell you something. This is way sharper with way less aberration yeah. than you're going to get on that legendary Zeiss Design 110 yeah. F2. I know, right? This, that lens in its period was like that the lens. That now, was, it was the lens, yeah. While you're holding the 100, David, yeah. talk a little bit about what makes this lens unique and how it differs from the 120. Because they're only 20 millimeters apart. So why would I use the, uh, right here, why would I use the 120 over the 100? I know there, Charlie asked this. Thank you, Charlie. Um, and since we're, we're talking about it, we're holding it. Go into that a little bit. I'm just going to try to align this is a, the um, front of them. This is just, um, just for reference, because someone's going to ask. This is a, um, the 100 came with the 100 year or yeah, that, something S set. So it has a special engraving on it. Um, that's, well, that's the 120. So, yeah, the 100. That's, sorry. Uh, that's what that engraving is. So that's so the, that just a special right edition there, engraving um, in case someone asks. But Pretty cool. Otherwise, it's a normal 100 millimeter lens. Yeah. Okay, so the 100 is definitely more compact. It's all internal focusing. You can see here as I'm turning the lens. Uh, it's sort of, well, let's say pseudo internal focusing. Right, it doesn't it's move, it, but just within itself. The inner barrel moves. Yeah. You can see that, but it, it never extends past the, the front filter ring here. So you can still use an 82 millimeter filter. Uh, the 120, uh, this was kind of a, a little gotcha back in the day when it first came out because yeah. There is two threads on here. There's an 82 millimeter outer thread, and there's a 72 millimeter inner thread, and both are threaded for filters. Yeah, which is pretty confusing. <laughs> Don't want to put 82 on there. But that here's what happens: if you put an 82 on here, <laughs> and then you focus, smash. Oh, actually, Ooh, no. Probably yeah, just wouldn't, just uh, yeah the lens just kind of stops yeah. it, for the lucky ones, and yeah. then there was maybe a few unlucky people with bad filters, and it just smashed through the smashed through the filter. Yeah. But the reality is, you know, or let's say I'm using a four inch filter holder. If you mounted a 72 millimeter ring or an 82 millimeter ring, you couldn't get infinity focus because that's infinity where you back it all the way off. Yeah. So like, why can't I get it sharp? Well, because the lens can't pull back enough. Uh, so there, there's a difference there. The, um, the 100 has a shorter focus throw overall because it's not a macro. What's the nickname of the 100? What do we call it? What we call the 100 is the Noctilux of the S system. That's right, because the 100 F2 is dramatically different in performance than the 122.5. It's not as sharp. It's a totally different lens for a totally different purpose. Portraits, close-up work. It's, it's a really good walk-around lens beautiful. because it's not much larger. It's very small. And because it has a shorter focus range, meaning it doesn't quick. go to it's macro, really it's much faster to autofocus. So you have to have them both. Sorry. <laughs> if, you like that, if you like that range, well, got to have them both. It's, and I don't know if this question is going to come up, so I'm just going to... I'm just, just saying, gonna, you can I'm just going to die. We're, we're freestyling. Free it's we're okay. We're freestyling here. Yeah. You know... And, and someone might ask this question. So here it is in case you asked it. Uh, people have certainly asked me, they've asked Josh over the years, well, what is the look of the S lenses? You've heard that, right? Sure, sure. What, what, do they look, what makes them unique? I mean, well, yeah. so here's the interesting thing. I think yeah. everyone can kind of accept that M lenses have a lot of character. Sure. And, and they're, you know, they're, they're creamy and they're yeah. 
they buttery that, and they're beautiful. They're magic. They got that magic. They've got that like a magic, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And we've got the SL glass that is just technical perfection. Insane. Like sharp yeah. for days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those things put everything else to shame in terms of absolute image performance, especially the new Aposumicrons are just bananas. Right. Right. So where do the S lenses line up in that? Well, interestingly, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, right in the middle, because let's take the 100, for instance. The 100, we call it the Noctilux, yeah. right? But this is way sharper. Way, way sharper. Way sharper than the 50 Noctilux 0.95. Yeah. And of course, it has autofocus and weather sealing, which is- And nice. it's autofocus and weather sealing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's an 80 millimeter equivalent, not a 50. Right. So let's compare it against the 75 Noctilux. Sure. Now that's a little tougher because the 75 Noctilux is- one is, of the sharpest lenses Leica makes right now. Um, and one of the smoothest. That's right. This is not far behind. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, that's probably a more meritorious comparison now mm -hmm. than the- uh, And in the, fact, you know, I was actually having a conversation with Mr. John Kreidler and, and he was positing to me that he would rather put this on his SL2 Ooh. than a 75 Noctilux because it is autofocus, it is right. weather sealed, right. and it right. has right. a really similar look to the 75 Noctilux. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Um, I will mention the 100 is probably the rarest of all the S lenses. You don't see these used a lot. I never see them used. It came out very late in the game. Mm. Uh, so before people email me tomorrow and say, you're talking about the 100, I need to have one used. You're not <laughs> going to get one. Like, I'm awaiting this for them. It's ridiculous, I know. The 120, good. though, yeah. the 120, because it's been around, it was one of the original well, four I lenses. I that one, too, actually. Yeah. We did it in a few <laughs> weeks ago. But when well, people are starting to realize that these lenses, these lenses have, have existed this whole time. They haven't gotten yeah. better or worse over time. They just were underappreciated. Um, the way these lenses render is... Amazing. It is really splitting the difference between the magic and the warmth and the yeah. richness of the M lenses and the clinical, razor-sharp, unrelenting performance of the SL glass. It's like right in between. Right, like I'll take another one of my favorite lenses because I, I said what are my two favorite, but I'm going to say what my third favorite uh -huh. is. All the way over there. Ah, yes. We love this lens. This lens, I think I love this one a little too much. <laughs> uh, gee. You can see there. I don't Ooh, know. Is that yeah. a dent? Uh, no, that's not a dent. That's a love mark. Oh, is that what that is? That's a okay. love mark. Uh -huh. So this is this is my lens. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Gee, I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> you wouldn't have guessed it. And basically, this is the this is the twenty four S lens. Twenty four three five. Twenty four three point five, which is like a nineteen millimeter two point eight, and it's pretty compact actually. And this is a landscape powerhouse. Yes. Oh my word. And here's the thing too, I just want to jump in real quick. This lens is one, of, a lot of S lenses have a similar look, 30, 45, uh, 35, all look very similar. The 24 is one of those lenses. It's got its own look. It really has its own look. Yeah. It's, it's crisp. Oh, it's so cool. But yeah. depth, and what's crazy is, I can be right on top of something, and there is zero distortion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Part of that Remarkable. is because of medium format. It's a 24, which is not a super wide lens. It's a moderately right, wide right, lens right, right. with a super wide field of view. That's right. a big difference. Yes. So it has the distortion characteristics better than most 24s, I would say. Uh, I would say this has the distortion characteristics of a 28. Yeah. But it has the field of view of a 19. So nice. And, like that. Like and because I also can get crazy depth of field on it, everything from like one and a half meters to infinity, and I just turn the camera into a point and shoot, is oh, yeah. it's yeah. amazing front to back, side to side, mm. corner to corner, super, uh, and super that nice. lens. Even wide open, by the way. Even wide it's open. It's crazy good wide open at 3.5. Even on the 64 megapixel S3. Yeah. yeah. All of these lenses yeah. were over-designed for 37 megapixel. I, I, before we get to another question, I want to, David and I were talking about, um, just because I know the inevitable question we have to answer and we're getting kind of late is, where does the 007 at 37 megapixels fit in mm. today with a 41 megapixel monochrome a and a 47, 47 megapixel SL2, right? I know this question is there, and I just want to, I want to kind of get to You want that. to hit it? I do. I, do. Right. I, think, what do you I think, think we're in prime time right now, so. What do you think? Why the would thing is, I? Well, let me, let me be the devil's advocate fire here. Fire away. Okay, why would I want this camera where it's not that advanced? Look, there's no image stabilization. Right. Um, it's slow. Right. Or, right. I mean, sure, it's, sure. Look, it's three frames a second. The best analogy I can make. And Why wouldn't I want this the SL2? A, this isn't one of David's analogies that's like long and circuitous. This is a, I think, a more I like my analogy. I mean, you know, they have their place. Um, <laughs> think about the M10 monochrome. The M10 monochrome uses physics to its advantage to give you something you couldn't get any other way. It removes 
filtration over the sensor. Mm -hmm. The compromise, of course, is it doesn't shoot color. It shoots black and white. Really? That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. That's wow. the word in the street. The S007 and the S Experience is the same idea. It uses physics, meaning in this case, a larger sensor with larger pixels, in your favor to give you a rendering and a level of image quality you couldn't have gotten any other way at the cost of size. It's bigger than an M camera. It's bigger than an SL2. And speed. It's not as fast as an SL2 or an SL for that matter. So the S system is designed to give you an image that when you look at it, you get a similar emotional reaction that you mm. would with a monochrome picture. But in color. But in color. Yeah. It is the color monochrome. That is interesting. As in counterintuitive yeah. as that sounds. And I don't mean in terms of high ISO or any of that. I don't think I don't mean any technical aspect. I mean from a f how you feel when you use it when you shoot it. Mm -hmm. Because you are It does have a great sound. Also true. Yeah. Because you have given yourself this incredible sensor. What are you looking for? This one. There. <laughs> but, uh, with and, and with what? Oh yeah, put an S lens on there. So the thing is, is the SL2 giving you a better quality picture than the at 47 megs than the S07 oh, is at 30 at 37.5? The answer is no. There are a couple of key differences here. Number one, far and away, we talk about this dynamic range. From your experience, what single do you think, shot HDR. What do you think is the usable dynamic range difference? Again, best case scenario between the SL2 and the SL07. I mean, the SL2 is very good. Yes. We've, not spent, to, we've spent two episodes talking about it. So not we, to take we, away uh, anything from the SL2. Yeah. I love the SL2. The S, though, has one and maybe one and a half, maybe two stops. I'm leaning towards two from my testing okay. that I did today. So Let's call it one, one and three quarters. 1.75. 1.76. One, one and a half to two stops. Yes. Let's be fair. Yeah. One and a half to two stops, dynamic range advantage with more ability to push the pixels around in post without noticing it. You'll notice that's where do we hear this before? More dynamic range, a more malleable file in post production, monochrome. Monochrome. Versus a M10. Yeah. More dynamic range. So again, physics working yeah. in our favor to give us a more flexible file. And if you want to see that, yes. you should check out the ISO showdown. Right, that David just posted. Which yes. I just posted. And, and you yeah. can see what effect that has. Yes. In terms absolutely. of not just the fact that you can shoot a higher ISO, but in the range that the normal shooting range. Mm how much smoother gradation it is, how much greater dynamic range it has. Yeah. It's not just lack of noise. Yeah. Yeah. It's that that stuff you're talking about. The shadow recoverability of the 07 is very similar to the M10 monochrome. Yeah. In a lot of ways. I could see that. Um, where when you shoot for the highlights and you let's say you're photographing a landscape and you've got a bright sky, you shoot for the sky, and like David was saying, the, the rest of the picture is black. Mm -hmm. That's because all that detail is still there. If you, sh and I did this earlier today, side by side, ISO 200, you know, which is a native ISO for both, um, basically, tripod, the whole thing, same focal length F8. Yeah. Underexposed by two stops on the 07. Yep. Underexposed by two stops on the SL2. When I say underexposed two stops, I mean from the meter. What I am doing is exposing for the highlights. Sure. I'm exposing for the highlights to make sure I, I protect my most um, valuable fragile asset. And, and valuable <laughs> asset in my image. It's like so, carrying around eggs. <laughs> I boost that in Lightroom to. Proper image, yeah. S file looks normal. Looks I mean, like right, a and it doesn't picture. look. And I think this is a point that people miss, right? Yes. Because people have heard HDR before, right? And they're used to, oh, it looks like HDR, which right. it, it doesn't. Fit. It doesn't look like HDR. That's the crazy thing. When yes. I take my S files in yes. Lightroom, and I have my highlight slider minus hundred pegged, yeah, and I've got my shadow slider yeah. plus hundred. That's basically what I did. Yeah, and you're looking at it and you're like, well, it's pretty that good. That just looks like a normal but, photo. So let me finish here. Right? I gotta finish this. So. S07, exposure to the highlights, push two stops. Yeah. ISO 200, fine. Looks normal. SL2, same thing. You start to see noise. Huh. You start to see like ISO 800 type of noise. Now, compared to, let's say, the M10 or a different camera, you may say it looks better. Mm. But we're talking about the cream of the crop here. Right. We're talking about, again, physics working in our favor, where a medium format sensor with very large pixels mm -hmm. and a sensor designed from scratch is giving you a level of malleability, control, and dynamic range that the SL2, in all of its great amazingness, can't match. Now, can we point out here that you're talking about a sensor from 2015 yes. against a sensor from yeah. 2019. That's crazy. We haven't even done the S3 yet. Um, no. We will when we get one on demo. So the 007 is slower. The Temier, there's not really a wide range of zooms. There's no stabilization. I get it. It's not, it's not an SL2. 
It doesn't have an EVF. It has an optical viewfinder. Mm -hmm. But if you shoot with, um, I know some people, uh, if you have a hard time in bright light or you shoot sungla with sunglasses on or like um, polarized goggles, lenses, uh, yeah. polarized lenses, yeah. you can't use an EVF camera. Not easily, unless you turn your head to the right. side, 90 degrees. <laughs> Best cameras, optical viewfinder. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. Um, I, I can tell you, um, certainly having shot a lot with landscape with both the SL and yeah. the S in a wide variety of conditions, uh, let's say I'm out shooting northern lights, mm -hmm. which is usually you're out in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. and it has to be dark enough with no moonlight or whatever where you can actually see the faint northern lights. Well, on the EVF cameras, you can't see anything. Right. On the optical finder of the S, I can compose my shot. Yeah, you're you're not it, relying on as it, long as my eyes have adjusted. Right, you're not relying on electronic gain. You're relying on your eyeballs, uh, your iris to open yeah, up and exactly. yeah, so, dilate. Certainly, the SL2 is probably the camera I grab more for well, walk around, it's faster, casual, more flexible. Right, exactly. You got the zooms, but that's okay with me because I know that when it's time to make those pictures, mm -hmm. those pictures, those the pictures. ones that you put into a book, the ones you print sixty by eighty, you hang it over your couch, that's where the S is coming in. Or the situation where you're in Iceland and you've got the waterfall in shadow <laughs> and the so beautiful eight hour a day sunset in here and you yep. need to get that all because you can't do HDR because you have moving water and you're yep. yeah, blending yep. and all yep. this mess. That's right. One shot, you nail it. Mm -hmm. So again, just to, to recap, the S system, the yeah. S 07, the S system is like a color monochrome. It's the same feeling, the same benefits, mm -hmm. just with color. You're still making compromises, just you make compromise with the monochrome. The same thing, you're making a compromise somewhere, in this case, speed and flexibility, but you're gaining a level of image quality that is, it's a joy. When you know when you watch yeah. David in Lightroom, or even just pulling one of his presets for an 07, and we, we've done this for years, yeah. and you just watch what these files can do and turn they into- They just come alive. It's, it, they do come alive, that's a great way to say it, yeah. Uh, and I think also, you know, and again, you read anything I've written or hear me talk about it, I don't, I'm not, I, I, I don't like the words, like I, I get itchy when I hear <laughs> out of camera. Yeah. What does it look like out of camera? It's like, yeah. eh. So, but I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say the S, out of default rendering mm -hmm. that comes out of this camera <laughs> to other things, uh -huh. is so natural. Sure. Uh, it has very pleasing natural skin tones. Yeah. The colors are- I mean, are, depending on how you shoot it. Yeah, I think because yeah. you know we, you and I are shooting for the highlights. We're, you know, right, but, right. But if you're, sh if you, if your objective is to shoot for the least amount of post, and you're not in an overly complicated dynamic range situation, I think you have to have yeah. some qualifiers. Yeah, I, I think so. Or the lights behind you. Yeah. You know, you're shooting yeah. with the sun at your back, and you have this yeah. broad light. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The 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 results from this camera are just, I don't know. They yeah. they just have this life to them and this yeah. realism. Yeah. That I find. Even the SL2, with its as its most modern camera, and it is the technology platform of Leica, mm -hmm. still isn't quite there. I mean, there's that; it's missing that. And I think even if you look at S2 files, they have a lot of that. You process too. an S2 file today in the modern iteration of Lightroom. The skin tones, oof. the skin tones on the S2 are. We incredible. had that 30 by 40 that John Latimer made yeah. um, for us a couple years ago from the S2 that we shot in uh, the White Mountains in New Hampshire, I think. Oh, in Conway. Yeah, was it, yeah. Was it Conway? Yeah. 30 by 40 print from the S2, okay, 2008 tech here. Yeah. And, you know, base ISO tripod, good technique. You, you look like you can just walk right into that scene. I mean, oh, what was, about EJ Camp's prints that we had? Yeah, we had, we had EJ, uh, EJ Camp is a professional photographer. Um, I think she's still working. Yeah. She started with the S2, and I don't know what she's using now, but. She was in Seascapes. She did a show of Seascapes of, uh, I don't know, 40 by 60s in no, the store. They were measured in feet. They were huge. Yeah. Well, you massive. can measure anything in feet. No. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just saying, they were. <laughs> Um, you know, they were huge and they were insane. I mean, you could just, ugh. Okay, so we've, we've pined on for too long. Let's get to an actual question instead of just rambling. Jose. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Sorry. So Anthony's <laughs> <We're passionate>. asking, <laughs> Anthony's asking if you could briefly talk about the 120 millimeter tilt shift lens. The one lens what we don't have? The, the Schneider had a 120 tilt shift for um, Mamiya 645 mount because they have a partnership or something with Mamiya, I don't know. And it's a long story for another day, but they ended up making one with an S mount. Yeah. And the, it's manual focus only, manual aperture, full manual. Non-weather sealed. It doesn't... 
It's not. It's an interesting lens for tabletop photography. It doesn't have nearly yeah. enough movement in the tilts and shifts and swings. It's or, very limited. I think right. maybe five millimeters. It, it, at that, I yeah. played with it in our first um, New England trip just because mm -hmm. I had it with me. Just because whatever. Yeah. It wasn't. It didn't do. We it weren't overly me. impressed. Yeah. With it. If you're doing tabletop photography, you need some movement. But listen, uh, you had a friend who is a watch photographer who used it. Yeah, it worked for him. And you know, yeah. for for product. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Because you're talking about getting close to something and trying to carry depth of field. Right, right, right. And you got to get that shine fluid working. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. So that's, the, it's a very limited it's application. It's really lens. specific. Super, super niche. Not even made by Leica, made by Schneider. Yeah, um, with an S mount. Yeah, with an S mount. So it's cool, interesting, different, good question. I'm glad someone asked because we don't have it and it, I wouldn't have thought about it otherwise. Uh, but not a lens that makes sense for 99% of S system users from my experience. So, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Next. All right. Uh, question from Richard. Can you write DNGs to the first card and JPEGs to the second? Yes. Sure. Yeah. And can that be swapped where the DNGs are written to the second card and JPEGs to the first? No. no. Jinx. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can write DNG only to both cards at the same time. Yeah, but now you can't switch to the other. And I you can even, write DNG to the first and JPEG to the second. I don't even put a second, uh, but compact flash card in the S anymore because... No, I, I haven't used CF I don't want to use compact ever. flash card. I just use SD. Because all the S cameras, S3 included, take Have both. Uh, one compact flash card, one SD card. You look, you can have a compact flash card in there for backup if you're doing something that needs it. But I'm not. Using... I am not wild about CF cards anymore because yeah. uh, they have, well, not just one point of failure. They have like a hundred points of yeah, failure with those little ports. pins in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ever bend one of those pins, Ugh. game over. No yeah. more. So good uh, question though. I think we can. Yeah, we SD can... cards used to be small. Now yeah. they're big. There so you, you know, do your thing and. Throw in a 64 or, yeah, a or 256 or whatever. Then you're good. Yeah. Next question. All right. Is it worth upgrading from the S2? Yes. Yes. <laughs> They've come a long way since then. Um, from a usability standpoint, oh, the, this, speed, the menu system, the ISO, screen. ergonomics, yeah. They've buffer memory. S2 is an S2 with a replaced sensor, you know, because they had the corrosion problem, um, is a great camera in terms of image quality. And they're relatively inexpensive now. What? Within its yeah very specific yeah. performance envelope, which is right. base ISO tripod, base ISO tripod slow, nothing moving. Yeah, um, but that it's great for that. Yeah, uh, I would I would say get at least a 006 or ideally an 007 because um, they're coming down in price and they're yeah. Next question. All right, is the Context 645 to S mount AF adapter still available, and how good is it? Yes, it's, uh, a, it's available, right? Officially, I don't actually know if it's still in stock or not. I haven't checked. We don't sell a lot of them. I mean, there's there's not a lot of contact users out there still, and not a lot of them out there still who are then wanting to get an S camera. Yeah, that's um, a pretty narrow I can, I'm Venn sure diagram, I could get right? one. John Kreidler, if you see this, just text me. And if or just say, get them. <laughs> or he'll just be like, say something in, yes. the, in the comments. No, um, I'm, Rob, I'm watching or, the comments. It's, one, it's 16038. That's the product code. So okay. if, I can get, if, I, if I can still get 16038, Please let me know. Um, but I I would say I wouldn't go out and buy an 07 and a bunch of contact lenses. No. That like, doesn't make sense. I mean, if you have to get them serviced, I wouldn't even know where to start. No. Um, if you have a bunch of contact lenses, why not? Why not? That's awesome. But I wouldn't I wouldn't do that with any system, with any alternative lens. I would get S lenses. I would get the pre-owned. They were pretty good deals, although less and less now. We keep talking them up so much. But <laughs> yeah. Next 70s can be had, 35s yeah, can be yeah. had, 120s yeah, can be go. had. But we'll, um, we'll have to find out if they're readily available or not. So, okay. I'm, right. I'm seeing if you replied yet. No. Can well, you talk mine. about the alternative focusing screens offered? Sure. There are three total. The S uh, comes with a universal screen, which is a crosshair in a circle. Mm -hmm. There is a grid screen, which duplicates the crosshair in the circle and has a uh, six by four grid on it. It's cool for a landscape. Um, if you're doing architecture or landscape stuff, mm -hmm. um, they'll never be able to see it, so it's okay. I do have one here, but um, it's not, it's too small. Um, there is the micro prism screen, which is a split mm. prism like you got in the old school, mm -hmm. like Nikon or whatever. And that's really gonna be for using those adapted, like uh, Hasselblad V system lenses, lenses yeah. or Pentax 6, 7 lenses um, to give you the most accurate. Yeah, if uh, you guys remember, it's basically focus. like a, a donut ring around the center that has a. I think we have a, a red dot forum store uh, on the S2. We do. We, we do. took a video if through you, the viewfinder. If you search yeah. uh, microprism on red dot forum, do oh it, gosh, do, do it while I'm talking. See if we can, see what. I don't know if it's you'll find. You should find it. Well, try it. Um, you know, David and I have been at this David for longer, but for a long time. I mean, since the birth, 
uh, of the S system. Before the birth of the S system. We have so much content that we we have more content that we've forgotten about than we have that we remember. Let's see. Actually, when I was putting links for this article for this. Um, yeah, there we go. Can, for this can you go to the computer, uh, Jose? Yes. Oh, this is probably going to be formatted horrifically. It's fine. Scroll, All right. Scroll, scroll. So that oh, well, there you can see the screen. Yeah, we've come a long way since then. Oh yeah, you can totally see that, right? <laughs> Show them the video there. It's in somewhere. Uh yeah. So there's a little thing around here, and yeah, let's see. Oh, that that's clear, right? <laughs> you, can, you can go to Red.4 and see it for yourself. Yeah, so basically it shows what it looks like using yeah. the microprism. We got a nice picture of the viewfinder for you because we're cool. Yeah. Right Let's scroll down. Parking. There it is. Oh, that's out of focus. There oh, you there go. you go. So it yeah. kind of gets this shimmer to it. Yeah. I'm going to zoom in further. So you can see it's like a crosshash shimmer when it's out of focus. And when it's in focus, it's totally smooth. Yeah. So you're it's, trying. It's, it's almost like the, using an M in a lot of ways. Yeah, it like it's kind of a pseudo rangefinder yeah, for yeah, yeah. for a reflex. So just go and check out the story. Um, oh, there you is go. Is the sound muted on that? Yeah, another. Uh, the sound is muted. Okay, let's see. So this is oh in a, wow, 2011. 2011. Oh, gee, is a short video? We can show it. Here we go. Check this out. Look at that sweet title slide we got there. Oh, we've I'm, come a long way since then. So embarrassing. So here, we, here we are. Okay, this is you know in through the viewfinder of an S2, I suspect. Yes, it was an S2. It yeah, had to have been. So that's what that is the best demonstration of the microprism that I can give you. Fade. And that's it. Fade to black. We're over. <laughs> right. Good Yay. question, though. Um, the universal screen comes with the camera. A lot of used ones will sometimes have other screens. Yeah. Um, Personally, I like the grid or the greatest, standard screen. Greatest, greater standard. And then we only, I'm only using the microprism for adapted uh, manual focus only lenses. So. Yeah. And we even have our, we went out, remember we shot uh, with the Pentax. Like I do remember, yeah. 105, 24 yeah, legendary yeah, yeah. lens <laughs> against the 120. Trash. And the 120 just creamed it. <laughs> so, the old days. Yeah, good old days. Good All right, days. next question. All right. So Roy is asking, what happened to the SE? The SE Exists. Uh, was a redone uh, S-Type 006 mm -hmm. with this anthracite gray top plate and a silver shutter speed dial. It was... Um, when the 07 came out, it was like a lower priced alternative, um, just like they did with the ME. Yeah, it's, it's stand, the twice. E stands for essential, right? So not as fancy. So it's basically like uh, allowing people to buy a new camera in a system without having to buy the latest model at the highest price. Right. That was the SE, but it is functionally identical to the S Type 006. I think when the new camera came out, they basically still had components. Sure. Yeah. But they wanted to offer something different. Yeah. And and it does look really cool with that yeah. kind of and there's not a lot of anthracite gray. No, it's, it's kind of so. unique. All right. And it's still a good camera. Yeah. There's Next nothing question. Bad about it. Yeah. All right. How does the resolution gain on the S3 affect the sensibility towards shake? Hmm. Uh, you have to be more careful. Yeah. Because pixels are smaller, which means smaller movements register as visible. Uh, when I was shooting with the S3, I was conscious of this. I tried to keep higher shutter speeds just in general, but also I have a lot of practice on the S, and the, and as the generations kept going with the S cameras, uh, they also managed to dampen both the mirror mm. and the shutter vibration, because yeah. even on mirror up, you could still get a, a softer uh, shutter activation on a 007 than you did on a 006, for instance. So I've even been able to handhold the the S007 at a 15th of a second with no image stabilization in the lens or the Most body. Most people can't do that. David has like the steadiest hands on the planet. It's not uh, the steadiest. Very steady. So Very steady. But basically, then I've, I've gotten used to that over the years. And I had to think in my head, I'm like, I need to be more careful. I need to make sure that I hit those maybe one or two stops higher yeah. shutter speeds in order to know that I'm not going to get camera shake. And like I say, in every single live stream, if you're getting into a situation where your shutter speed's too slow to handhold on the S or the S3, just raise your ISO. Yeah, because take, what do you I'll, say? I'll always take a grainy <laughs> picture over a blurry picture. Always, always. And not that it's grainy, but grainier, relatively, right? Noisier, yeah. I'll go to ISO 1600. If I have to. Yeah, but 1600 looks perfect on I know. Three. Well before I'm thinking like, oh, I'm at a 15th, I'm at a 10th, I'm at a, you know. Um, yeah. Okay. Next question. Cool. Mm. Jeff is asking, on the SL2, would you prefer the 90 millimeter Summicron SL or the 100 millimeter S lens? Ooh. Um, I think I tested yeah. today. Yes, the, absolutely. I tested the 90 <laughs> against the 120 today. Did you? Uh, I did. I didn't have the 100. Uh, you had the 100. So I don't actually know how the twos perform side by side. My guess is that the 90 is probably sharper. I think so. Because it is designed for the SL. It is a more modern lens. 
The 100 isn't designed to be the sharpest. It's designed for The 100 pretty. is going to look more like the 75 Noctilux. Yeah. Which has got that, that character, that warmth, that 3D magic, whatever. Um, really, really smooth gradation from in focus to yeah. out of focus. Yes. Like, just... um, I think the 100 would be better for portraits if you're looking to get that look. The um, nine, Yeah, the 90... The 90 is going to focus a heck of a lot faster. That's but the 90 sure. might be almost too sharp for mm. portraiture yes. yeah. versus... Cause Remember when we were talking about the SL, in, in our SL live stream, we said that a 75 Noctilux would probably be a better portrait lens than a 75 Aposimicron mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's a little yeah. more forgiving. Yeah. Because it has that smoother skin rendering. Yeah. I don't think I would choose between those two because if you didn't own either, it mm. would depend on which camera you owned. Yeah. If I owned both cameras, I'd get the 100 because I can use it on both cameras. Right. Whereas if I owned just an SL, I wouldn't get a hundred because I would just use a ninety. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, and, and it's, it's a lot just, smaller. Like obviously, with an infinite budget, I have everything. But your, your practical decisions should be practical. So um, again, if you already own it and you, and you have an SL or an SL two, you should definitely get the adapter. Yeah. Um, if I you mean, already own it and the ninety, you should still get the adapter. Why you, not? You've got to understand that we're kind of splitting hairs here. It's well, like that's kind of what we do, you know. But you're taking. You've split a few more than I have, I think. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> I could have said. <laughs> We're, you know, at a certain point, uh, these are all amazing optics, yeah. right? When we talk about the 75 and the 90 Apo SL, uh, or we talk about the 75 Sumo, you know, uh, Noctilux, Noctilux yeah. or even yeah. the Apo Sumacron M yeah. is a really yeah, great yeah. lens. And you talk about that versus the 120 or the 100S lens. These are all world-class optics. Like, they're not, none of these lenses, right. not a single one is even approaching anything near mediocre. Right. They are exceptional plus. Yes. And yes. we're looking at the fine nuanced differences yeah. between one and the other. So you gotta understand when we're like, oh <laughs> definitely this. Right, it's like, right, 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 right. It's and a lot of times it's more than just is this better? Because a lot of times better is is very subjective. Very subjective. So different. At this yeah. level, things are different. They're not better or worse. In unless you're talking about I'm photographing a painting. I need to duplicate it. It has to be perfect in the corners, and you know, right. that's different. So, good question, though. We got time for more, right? Oh yeah, we're doing fine. Keep going. Yeah. All right, Joel is asking if you think Leica would consider a more compact wide-angle S lens. No. No, I think you're limited by the size of the mount. I mean, think about it. the 24 millimeter that I showed you, yeah, which right is over here. there. You can just pop it up there. Yeah. That's a 3.5. Yeah. And it's that big. Uh, yeah. If you want a more compact, it would have to be a 5.6. Get a 35 f2 and an SL2. Like. Sorry to say, like it's just it, the S system is not designed for compactness. Compact. Like a design that system saying, okay, we understand it's not going to be the smallest. We have M for that, and now they have SL for that. It's all about uncompromising performance. And the thing about the S lens is, if you people ask us on all the other live streams, like, okay, which M lens is best uh, on the M10 monochrome? You know, which okay, there's like 40 M lenses you can buy new well, right not, now. We're not best. Let, let's qualify Sharpest. that. Sharpest. What what is actual capable of optimized. resolving yes, yes. and optimized for that sensor? Right. So what lens? Right. So, but within the S system, that question never has to be asked. It's moot because every single one of the S lenses was designed for the S. Mm -hmm. Every single S lens is optimized for the S system. So it's not a matter of okay, Josh, um, should I take the seventy this time because it's better? No, they're all optimized for the S system. So there's none of that. Um, Sort of like mulling over. Okay, should I take the fifty one four? Should I take the fifty Apo? Right. That doesn't exist. That's why I find myself saying it's like, well, this is my favorite, and that's my other favorite, and that's my <laughs> We're other all favorite. David's favorite. Yeah. And then I, this one's really great too. I mean, too, I shot with the thirty to ninety. I still do for for car stuff when I'm at a, yeah. an event. Double oh seven, thirty to ninety. That's it. No bag, just an extra battery in my pocket, and that's it. And that lens for for great. It's it's slower aperture, so it's not like a low light. Yeah, we didn't lens. talk about this. This is a 3.5 uh, to 5.6. Yeah, it's like a 24 to 70 equivalent. But as long as you're not needing an f2 or f4 or whatever, or whatever or a 2.5 aperture, this is a great walk-around lens. It's five it's pretty, lenses in it's one. It's pretty compact. I can not hold that it in my big. hand, right? Um, it's it's certainly heavier than an S, most S lenses, but it's a lot lighter than carrying it's, five lenses. And it, it's really not bad. Um, I use this exclusively... Uh, I took a trip to Monument Valley, mm -hmm. and I, I was used, there, wasn't I? I? Yeah, we, <laughs> we, were, we there. were there together. Yes, we were. Uh, and oh my gosh, we were in these uh, like like two ton uh, kind of semi open trucks with a tarp over them, oh, basically my goodness, yeah. driving through like what they called it uh, the uh, Nava, Nava Navajo massage. massage. Yeah, he's like rocks and you're like, like knocking you around. You need a yeah. neck brace after you're done with yeah, this. Yeah, it was nuts. But everything, all of our gear, camera bags, bodies are just 
coated mm-hmm. in like like a tangible <laughs> thick layer of red soot mm-hmm. on everything. And I said, yeah, I think I'm just going to go with 3090. <laughs> exactly. And never change no the lens. No changes required. And if you're shooting tripod mounted, the aperture is not an issue in terms of like, you don't need... But it was light. even bright enough there in the desert, in the right. high desert. So here's I, a case I where... I did a lot of handhold shooting. Right, he doesn't want to change lenses because of environmental reasons, so pop on the 30 to 90. So it's, we it's got a topic, the purpose. I think, here. But uh, yeah, next question. Before well, I don't know here. what the question was. Ah, it's okay, we're moving on. All right, so going back to that... 30 to 90, um, does it have internal focus? Does it extend when zooming? It extends when zooming, but not when focusing. David, can you yeah, I'll show you. Zoom it out. Here Demonstration. So you can see when I zoom it, when I zoom, it definitely, whoop, let me go that way. When I zoom, you can see that's at 90. So it kind of works the way you think it's going to work. And it becomes the shortest at 30, right. which is nice because it takes up less space in your camera bag. Right. And it's you can probably hear it. It's expelling some air. It's, it's actually is completely sealed. And then the uh, the focus ring is separate. And you'll notice that when I move the focus. No length change. There's no length change yeah. at any focal length. I Correct. should qualify that. Yeah. So internal focusing. Internal ex- focusing. External zooming. External zooming, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Next and, question. And a 95 millimeter filter thread. Next question. All right. So what is going on with the failed focus motors mm. on s That's a good question. I can answer that. Um, so. There was an issue um, for a couple of years in the beginning of the S-Lens uh, existence. We didn't know about it for a while because it wasn't a thing. Nope. And over time, what was happening is the autofocus on an S-Lens would fail. It would just kind of wear like, and it wouldn't work. And we didn't really know what was going on. You know, We didn't think much of it at first, and more failure started to happen. And it turned out, I think it was what, a plastic gear yeah. inside the focus motor would get stripped. This was especially prevalent when using the 007 for the first time, when you would mount the, your, your S-Lens that was working fine to the 007 for the first time, like 2015, 2016. Yeah. The extra power Voltage, yeah. it was putting through would strip that gear. And because was, the, the 007 had faster autofocus. Right. So And how does it do that? It drives the motor faster. Right, right. that's right, yeah. as simple as that. So um, this, this sort of this the failure rate started increasing as, mm-hmm. as the 007 mm-hmm. permeated the market more. And... Once like I realized this, they spent, well, I don't know, a year, year and a half working on a fix. I couldn't imagine how complicated that must have been, <laughs> trying to re-engineer a new component that would work with all the existing lenses and all the existing, you know, the repair facilities and everything. So And not just that, they had to put it through. They build these, like it has their own in-house engineering team mm. where they do testing. So if you kind of imagine like in a factory where they build doors, it opens and closes the door a million times. Or I like the one in, you know, when they make couches and it's like the fake person sitting on it. <laughs> but here, they had to basically build a, a system, engineer a whole test system, to drive that gear hundreds of thousands of right. times. To simulate use. To simulate use. Right. And if it didn't work... They start again. They That's start cool. again. It has to go back to that. And that process yeah. took, took so, about a year. And we were all, as users, we're like, why doesn't Leica right. just fix this? Right, right, right. Because what they want to do is not just put a Band-Aid on it. Right. They were like, when we fix it... Yeah. Like, this is fixed Because there was a time when they were just replacing it with the same motor. They were, just, just to, to buy get, time. Just to get people out, out shooting again. Mm-hmm. But, of course, that's only a temporary solution. Right. Because they didn't have a, a, a permanent, a permanent solution. Yeah, they finally did. They had to come out with one for every lens. And they did and, a voluntary recall, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah. if your motor failed um, within... They were doing it for free for everyone for a while. For years. Failure. Years. And then, I think now, the lens has to be uh, less than five years old, and they'll do it for free. And if it's more than five years old, it's like three hundred dollars, and you get a one-year warranty with that, as well as a CLA, you know, overhaul. So, considering that, like most S lenses are over five or six thousand mm-hmm. dollars, you know, three hundred dollars isn't bad. I think it's just yeah. like a, at a certain point, no company has infinite free recall service forever. Um, I believe they did it for five years. They did it for I think maybe more than five years, but yeah. it was a long time. It's a really long and time. And I get every, you know it's it is frustrating to have a failure component. It was frustrating for Leica, yeah, it was driving them crazy because they re-engineering or re-engineering or re-engineering, um, and we're driving us crazy because we're dealing with these you know. So we're at the point now, David and I, where we're not going to take an S lens in on a trade. We're not going to sell an S lens, newer or pre-owned. We're not going to use an S lens that has the original focus motor. If it's coming from our universe it has a new focus motor put in so i have a lot of experience remember when i said at the beginning of this that there's great deals on used s lenses and it's a great place to go and i said 
but you got to be aware of a few yes. things. I would not recommend this getting an S lens with the original focus motor unless it was a really, really good deal. Just because you not only have the risk of failing if it hasn't failed already, you have to then send it in, get it fixed. It takes time. And, to Germany. Right. You're like, well, you can send it to the US and they can send it to Germany. Well, right. But it has but to go to ultimately, Germany right, to yeah. be fixed. So um, thankfully, it's not terribly expensive. They did it for free for everyone for a long time. Um, again, if you have proof of purchase that you bought it less than five years ago, it's still free. Mm -hmm. If not, it's 300 bucks. And you're not just getting a new focus mode. I want to keep it's saying full, that. It's full service. You're getting a full service and you're getting a one-year warranty. Maybe more like 350. I don't actually mm -hmm. know. So this changes over time as things go. But they're not... It's a subsidized, obviously. Sub I'm sure that yeah, motor is clearly. hundreds and hundreds of dollars, if not Because they have to disassemble the entire, yeah, the entire lens. lens. And because they do that, they have to completely reassemble, like making a new lens again. Yeah. And then they have to recalibrate everything from scratch. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, if you if you own an S lens that hasn't had the motor uh, replaced, just know that it may eventually fail over time. Um, so it's always something to think about. Doesn't mean you have to run out and get it replaced preemptively. Doesn't mean the lens is bad. It's still going to give you good pictures. Even when the motor fails, you can still use manual focus. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the field, it's not like you're out of luck. You just manual focus. So, yeah, you know, Leica is a very small company, and they do their best to make a perfect product. They do. <laughs> they're they're not going to succeed every time because it's pretty much impossible to make a product perfect when you don't have an infinite R and D budget. But I would say, you know, well, you don't have infinite time to test. Of course. So imagine you've tested this part and you've you racked autofocus on it or manual focus, like fifty thousand times, and you're like, yeah, it works. Yeah. And then ten years later, you come up with a newer model or something, and it has a different specs, and you're like, oh wait. And it drives it harder than what you anticipated. Yeah. But even though they tested those lens, new lenses right. with the right. new camera, right. and, and it was the old fine. Lenses, yeah. But what they didn't test was lenses that were fatigued right. Right. for five years. Five years of use, yeah. And then that yeah. extra torque. Had the failure, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was unfortunate. It but, was unfortunate. But Leica fixed it. Exactly. They did fix it. Um, even if you have to uh, cover the cost of the repair, it's not a lot relative to the value of the lens. It will always make the lens more valuable, more future-proof. And again, you're getting that one-year warranty, you're getting a, a CLA at the same time, so. And we have no reservation yeah. using a lens with a new focus motor. No, because I, we, we have know not seen a failure of a new focus. Like new ever, focus motor, I've never seen a failure, so clearly they have. They fixed it. Of course, in, if 20 years from now something else happens, you know, don't blame me. But uh, mm. yeah, I think for what Leica has done, um, for a system that has an incredibly small number of users relative to, say, M. Oh, yeah, definitely. And think about that for a second, right? The S system, I don't know the numbers, has got to be a fraction of the size of even just new M owners. I'm sure. Tens. And yet they're still committing to making sure the product works the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. Whether that involves, you know, re-engineering re a new part yeah. or whatever. So. Uh, let me ask you, yes. as a follow-up to that. Sure. That's something to look out for in used lenses. Is there yes. anything to look out for in the cameras? So uh, the S2 and the S006 uh, being CCD cameras did suffer from the CCD mm. corrosion issue. Same um, as the M cameras then? Same as the M9 and the M9 monochrome. So that is... Um, Another unfortunate thing. Actually, both of these. Yeah, both of these. Uh, this is an CCDs, M9 yeah. sensor, and that's an S2 sensor. So these are both CCD. I don't know, to be honest with you, the cost of uh, sensor replacement if it's going to be billed. It's probably not cheap, although, again, it's, it's still a subsidized cost. Well, don't they have a trade-in? Um, it is. They do, I think. It changes a lot. Yeah. Um, it changes based on supply. Now that we're in this sort of intermediary period where the 07 is no longer, I don't think, being made, and the S3 mm -hmm. is kind of being mm -hmm. ramped up, I imagine once things are normal again, and like us caught up with S um, body deliveries, a new or upgrade program will be announced, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know this for sure, I'm just guessing. So we're just because we're in a weird period right now, but for a long time, you if you had a, an S2 or an 06 with a corroded sensor, you could trade it up for an 07 at a ridiculously discounted price. Yeah. Um, so it was something. And if it was less than five years old, they'd replace the sensor for free. So um, so something to look out for. With the 07s, yeah. you know, they have been out for about five years. Um, it's not a bad thing if a camera was used a lot to have it serviced. Um, just like any other fine instrument, mm. um, they do require, not really require, but they do benefit from quasi-regular maintenance. Sure. Obviously, if it's working fine, don't worry about it, but it is nice to have, you know, a fresh CLA on something if you're going to use it hard or use it a lot. Um, it's not a big deal. It's not that expensive, um, considering that the S07 was, what, 20 grand almost mm -hmm, when it was mm -hmm, new. Mm -hmm. I think a full, even a full overhaul is under $1,000, so yeah. uh, it's not... Again, this is your relativistic. <laughs> yeah, and numbers. you get you get a new um, covering on it. Yeah, and then clean you know, out everything, yeah. recalibrate um, it. Clean but you certainly sensor. have to accept the fact that if you own a precision, hand tooled, handmade instrument, that when when new was priced high relative to the rest of the things that exist below it, 
it is going to be reflected in the cost of service. You buy a Ferrari, it's expensive to fix. You buy an old Ferrari, that's cheap, it's still expensive <laughs> to fix. You know? It's just part of it. Um, like it's not as, as expensive as fixing a Ferrari, thankfully, no. um, and a little bit more reliable. So, yeah. All um, right, Jose, what have we got? Yeah. So you guys basically answered this next question, but maybe you want to add a couple of details, mm -hmm. uh, especially for Josh. What do you look for um, in a used S lens and a used S camera when you're taking them in for trade-ins? Uh, well, like we said earlier, the um, S lens has to have the new focus motor installed. If has it doesn't, to. we'll send it in and get it done, but we're not going to take it in until it gets done. Um, any CCD-based S camera has got to have the new sensor. You know, S2 or S06 got to have a new sensor before we do it. You know, we're sending it in. 007, nothing specifically. Um, a, a service is nice, but not required. Just make sure it's not, you know, gouged on the body or anything. Yeah, it's got to work. Um, yeah. I don't mind if it's got some, some use as long as it's not messed up. Um, cosmetic wear and tear to me is... Cosmetic. It's cosmetic wear. Um, other than that, the normal stuff, you know, completeness of new, ownership history, is it one owner or five owner, um, cosmetic condition, does it have extra stuff, extra batteries are nice because they're not cheap no. to buy by themselves. But they last a really long uh, time. They do, they yeah. do. Um, you know, this is where having a good relationship with a like a reseller is important mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. someone that you can trust, someone who's, who clearly advertises what it is they're selling what the service history is, if any. Um, and actually understands the S system in general. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. only gonna, I can only speak for us, but certainly I think we've been pretty clear about how we yeah. um, take stuff in and then put stuff out. So I, I think of my most meticulous uh, associate, customer, client, friend, whatever, I think of that person mm. when I take something on trade and I go backwards from there. So if you're missing the case, I'm gonna tell you, you're missing the case. Mm. Like, We'll probably do a whole other video on my OCD trade-in procedures at some point. Um, I Your think OCD kind of everything? Well, right, definitely. <laughs> to, uh, like, uh, you know, that's why I can't drink this water because it has dog saliva in it. I don't uh, think that's OCD. I think that's just common <laughs> sense. But um, yeah, there, thankfully there's not like a ton of stuff you have to worry about. It is the focus motor and the sensor. Um, yeah. And you know, there's, there's have been out long enough. These, these issues have been known long enough. Um, there's, it's not a secret. I'm not going to be coy about it. I'll no. tell you. If I have a listing on the website, it'll say new focus motor. Like it'll be. We have clear. plenty of stories on Red Dot Forum. If you want to actually read this whole like sword history and yeah. all the updates and yeah. everything about, yeah. we have not kept it a this. secret. We have put it out there on the internet. We stand behind it. So, okay, we got time for like one or two more questions. So one more. Right. Can the S Type 007 autofocus anywhere other than the center? Ooh, that is a great question, David. Mm. Go. No. Yes. yes. Well, yeah, not. No, you didn't. No, that's the wrong answer. Yes. <laughs> yes in and line, no. Yes and no. In looking through the lens like that, uh, yeah, there's a single cross autofocus point. That's it. In the regular model. Yeah. And there's a reason for that, which I will explain if you want. Uh, in live view, you can focus anywhere on the sensor you want. And you can move uh, that point around with the joystick. Yeah. And there's a little, little crosshair that you can move anywhere. S similar on the to the SL. Very similar to the SL. A little slower, but similar. Uh, yeah. There's no touch screen. But, uh, very, very accurate, though. Yes. Um, I don't use that. So... If you watch, um, just to... Before David keeps going, David yeah. has a video, a really nice video about using Live View on the 007. Oh, yeah. I forgot about um, that. From the balcony. I, I have uh, that in the description. Of the, old, of the old place. I do, I do. Um, it's actually really... It's about 15 minutes of David talking about Live View and playback, but it's extremely informative. And you can see I in real time... I through the whole thing. Right, how to use the live view autofocus, how to use the focus um, peaking and yep. the um, exposure, exposure warnings yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of this stuff. It's really, really informative. So if you're spending the money to buy S gear, you might as well spend the time. And the link to that video is right in this description. There we go. Thank you for reminding me no as problem. well. No um, problem. I carry on, sorry. So focus. So point. what I was going to say is, uh, you know, a lot of people, why don't they have multiple focus points eight for the optical? And the reason is, if you took the same distribution of focus points from a regular 35 DSLR, they wouldn't be very far out of the center on the larger sensor in, in relative terms. So Leica didn't see a value in clustering all these autofocus sensors. You know, if you imagine this is the sensor, it is the sensor. Clustering them all in this tiny little area, right? Yep. Tiny little area here. But relative, if you had a 35 millimeter sensor, they're going to cluster over the whole sensor. Uh, but just because one of these things is not like the other, uh, you can see that what would cover a 35 millimeter in terms of uh, focus points would not cover the medium format. So instead of having kind of a half-baked solution, they decided to 
make the center point extraordinarily ac And also, I should mention this, you get less accurate autofocus as you get away from the center for multiple reasons, which I will not explain here <laughs> we, because we're, we're trying to keep this we're brief. We're out of time anyway. Just accept, you know. yeah, that's right. in the middle, autofocus is most accurate. Mm -hmm. As you get away from the middle, less accurate. And you medium format is all about precision. And it's all about precision. Yes. Even the S2, when I first used the S2, it was the most accurate and repeatable autofocus I had ever used on a camera. And like I engineered it from scratch for this camera. Yeah. And it's weird because the first time I used it and I, I was always used to photographing and you'd always like try to move and, and retap mm -hmm. and reacquire focus. And it wouldn't move, yeah, I remember this. On an Icon, a Canon, whatever I was used to at the time, it's like every time you'd half press the shutter, zit, zit, Z -z -z yeah. It's like Z -z -z it became like a like a security blanket. You needed yeah, to yeah, do it was that. Like, like I had to do it. I had yeah, to every yeah, shot reacquire yeah. focus. And I went to do it on the camera, and I'm like, oh no, nothing's happening. <laughs> it's broken. And it happened to be that the two product managers and the engineers were right there with me because I was testing the camera. And I said, I guys, I think it's broken. And they said, what's happening? And I told them, they're like, why would it move? It's properly focused. I was like, so German. Oh. Right, the camera knows it's in focus and yeah. won't go out of focus on purpose to go back in focus. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, and the autofocus only improved from there. Yeah, it's very, very, very accurate. Um, and I, my method is if I'm handhold shooting, I use rear button autofocus, which I love, uh, both on this and the SL too. Right, and you set it the same way, just by setting your focus mode to exactly. MF. M MF. That's it. And then this button is AFS mm -hmm. or AF on, I should say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, half press, and I just would focus and recompose and shoot. Focus and yes. shoot. Just like uh, using an M. It's Same yeah, idea. Just like using an M. The an M, M and M is center point focus only. Right. And people and, have survived for 75 years of that. So. And can I say that I can't remember missing focus? It just yeah. works. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're not shooting NFL sidelines with an S no, camera, at least no, not the action. No. You could if you were patient. No. But, so uh, so it, it's it's been totally fine for me. I actually really like the autofocus system in the S. So, and maybe it's just because I've used it for 10 years and I'm used to it yeah. and it's very second nature. Yeah. Uh, I don't really use the live view autofocus yeah. much at all. No. What I do use is the same as the, on the SL, which is the the top display with yeah. the live depth of field. And we covered video. that in the SL video. We did. You can look at our SL um, car. Getting short on time. But basically, um, video. you yeah. do get a live readout of depth of field on the top screen showing you the beginning of your focus point, the actual focus point, and the end. So you get to see how much depth of field you have. That's probably worthy of a oh, yeah. totally separate video. Um, Just be aware, it, it's yeah. awesome. It's awesome. So, okay, it's, it's like after 10. Uh, oh, it's I feel late. like we could probably, if there's if there's any super amazingly cool, awesome questions, Jose, that you want to um, ask or well, answer? Some people want to know the availability on the S3. The what? We talked about that already. Video? Availability. Availability. Oh, availability. Yes. Didn't we talk um, about that at the top? Yeah, Josh kind of touched on that at the top. Yeah. Just rewind and watch the beginning. Right. The short version is they've been shipping in lowest and limited but quantities. Very, very, very small um, quantities. Be patient. But they, they exist. They're real. They're shipping. There's already been a firmware update. It's not it's not in the prototype stage. It's out. People have them. There's just very, very few out there. Um, production has slowed down a little bit. Once they ramp back up, uh, I'm sure things will get better. Yep. It's still a handmade product. That requires a lot of time and engineering to and make, calibration. And make, it, and make it well. So the S cameras have never been ones that are shipped in mass. It's always they trickle, they trickle out. Yeah. So any other quick questions, Jose? Yeah. That's it. People want to see Enso, but oh, did they, they, they got yeah, Enzo they got him. He came up. We here should already. talk about the fact that um, we actually know now because we are. Why well, he just popped right up? Um, <laughs> we are going to do something really cool uh, next week. We are doing oh, M yeah. analog cameras. M analog cameras. We're going completely the other way. Um, film has seen a huge resurgence in the past couple of years. Uh, we certainly recognize that. Come here, buddy. Come here. I made I made a, I made like uh, a, a little Enzo zone. Oh, okay. An Enzo zone. Oh, look at him. He's crazy. Oh. Pa. Pa. Mm, yeah. Um, so if you have <laughs> uh, burning questions about M2s, M3s, M4s, M6s, whatever, any M film camera, um, let us know. Email us, put in the com well, comments of the next one. Um, we are, we're going to have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Um, so yeah, just be ready for that. M analog cameras in May 23rd, Sunday, or Saturday, May 23rd, 8 p.m. Eastern. So we don't usually know the next episode, but now we do. So now we I know. Can, we can promote it like a proper people should do. Yeah, that. this um, happens. Anything else you want to mention? I don't know. I'm like seeing 
Yay. Analog, can't wait. Okay. Yeah. Um, a couple oh. of people were asking about the, the sensor on the I see S3. that, yeah. I, we actually don't know who's making the sensor. Uh, it used to be back in, in this day, I could tell you who made these sensors, which was formerly the company formerly known as Eastman Kodak. Uh, now Kodak, or then Kodak TrueSense, then just TrueSense. These were the first generation, the M9 and the S2 were oh Kodak sensors. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> He's like taking me out. Yeah. No, no distraction, no distraction. Um, oh. Then uh, the, the S007, used a, 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 it was designed by uh, a Belgian company called Simosis in coordination with the Leica engineering and optics department because they actually okay. created their own micro lens structure, which was pretty cool. Oh. Um, and it was, and it was create it was, sorry, it was built at um, uh, SM something micro, basically another European semiconductor fab that was the last generation that we really knew what was going in the cameras. Yeah. Uh, that was the M240 generation. That was the S007. Yeah. Um, I think starting, I'd say, with the Q and the SL and then the M10 and, and all these, they're not necessarily the same sensor vendor. They're, we, like is just not saying. The I reality is, as a result, I've gotten so good, I've stopped caring. <laughs> that they sound? have gotten amazing. Like, I've... I'm looking we don't at the, know. I'm we don't know. The, we don't know. I'm looking at the images, and, and then they they blow me away. So I'm happy. You ask them, and they just smile, and they yeah. say, "We we, it's the right sensor." I think we should call it. I think we've done it. Yeah. yeah. Any I other? Think, let's I think, see. We, I um, think we could get to the comments. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll read through the comments that you guys left, and yeah. uh, if there's anything. Yeah. Remember, present. comment on this video once it's posted on our page. If, and I will we, be in the comments. We can't answer every question, so I mean, live, but we could definitely answer every question in the comments. When I say we, yeah. I mean David. Um, Thanks, Josh. So <laughs> definitely, once this video is posted, if you have more questions or questions about something we talked about, yep, comment, email, call, whatever. That's why we're here. And and I very well might might since there's such a huge wealth of information that we have generated over the last decade. Uh, very often, if you're asking me a question about any of these cameras, yeah. there is a very good chance I will just point you to the article where <laughs> I interview the yeah. engineer who designed it. Yeah, we've got uh, a lot of content if you're interested in the yeah. system. So. Uh, okay. But I think that that about covers it. So we are going to transition from highest end digital to down to uh, low, low tech, low tech. But I like it. Analog. I like it. Lo-fi. Like it. It's going to be fun. We're going from hi-fi to lo-fi. So stay tuned for next week's episode on analog M cameras, and uh, we're going to have quite the collection that we've already started sourcing. So thank you, by the way, to anyone who's watching who has contributed a camera. You'll get a proper shout and out in the next video. You'll get a proper shout out mm -hmm. next video. Mm -hmm. uh, do want to thank Rob, who uh, supplied us with the 100 that and, we used here. And uh, Michael, who supplied us with the contacts lenses and the adapter. Mm -hmm. Thank you, both of you guys, for helping us out. Because despite the fact that we have a lot of toys, we, we don't have sadly all of them. don't have all the toys. So we, Not yet. We have nice friends. Oh. And we apparently are dead. Hold on. Can they still hear us? I think they can still hear so. us. They can I think still hear us. We had a dead battery. Um, that's funny. That happens. We, have we have we not changed batteries the whole time? No. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Um, hey, hey, we're back. Ah, right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So we had to cut out because there was batteries. some really crazy stuff happening. There are technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Has Sorry that, about that. That before, has it? That's okay. So that has not happened before. We get complacent. We forget to change our batteries, and then uh, you know. And you need batteries for the digital things. That's pretty good, though. All right, anyway. so like I was saying, <laughs> we're going from high tech to low tech. We got that. Uh, we did want to thank everyone uh, who's, who helped us out and in the future as well. If you have any ideas for you know, camera talk episodes that you'd like to see, we definitely have some ideas of, of upcoming ones. Uh, send us a message or leave, leave us a comment in the video mm -hmm. after the fact when it mm -hmm. goes permanent on YouTube. And uh, I want to thank Josh, as always, and for... And Enzo for begging for treats and mm -hmm. slurping water. Mm -hmm. And we're done. And I Jose. Want Jose, thank you so much. And Kirsten and everyone who watched. And thank everyone who's watching, thank Please you subscribe. guys. Please subscribe for That's right. more content. Subscribe to Red Dot Forum YouTube channel. Check out red.forum.com, both uh, for upcoming Like a News articles, uh, in depth yep. stuff, and check it. the comments. Bye, everybody. Until next week, we'll see you then. See you guys.